scatter through scripture we see that favor is a reality we saw it in the life of the nation of israel scatter through scripture we see that speed is a possibility scatter through scripture we see that restoration is a possibility scatter through scripture we see that all these dimensions are there so that listen the bible says the things that are written aforetime it says that they are for our learning that means those those historic materials should mentor us into an understanding they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that makes not ashamed that if he did it before then he's able to do it again and one of those mysteries that represents a system of advantage as i call them you see everybody's life is ordinary and the same except for the leverage that the systems of advantage provide for you so we all have common destinies but we begin to rewrite our destinies as we assess the systems of advantage we introduce these dimensions of kingdom reality to our lives and our lives begin to change so it is possible to find two people born of the same woman under the same conditions sociologically speaking and territorially speaking so you would think that their destinies would look like the same one you know would, would, would be the same but one of them would access these systems of advantage and begin to change things in their lives when they looked at jesus because of his association with nazareth even nathaniel spoke and said can anything good it was not nathaniel's fault jesus never said you are lying that is the pattern except that the son of the living god already had this to change it everything is true until your life changes it it is true that delay is there it is true that failure is there it is true that spirits associated with territory can manipulate this favor upon people it remains true until you rise by light are we blessed according to matthew 13 and verse 11 in one of his mentorship sessions jesus began to teach and while he was teaching in parables he was shrouding mysteries in those parables and then later on he would explain to the disciples and he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there does not just mean an awareness it's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife an encounter with proofs it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven these are the ordinances that cause the saints to command dominion on earth you may have heard me say it once and again that dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah are we still together joel chapter 2 and verse 25 we've learned from scripture and we've learned from the experience of living that it is possible to lose things sadly many people have lost loved ones sadly many people have lost money sadly many people have lost time so there are the bible lets us know that the concept of losses or losing is a concept that exists with men we can lose things but according to the, the the bible the greatest loss that can happen to a man is not the loss of things it is the loss of time and so when he begins to talk about restoration his emphasis is the years not the things i will restore the years because when you meet a dying man he will not ask you to make transfer money into his account the greatest need of a dying man is more time isaiah 38 hezekiah did not require more money or an enlargement of his throne or rest round about hezekiah's request was god give me more time that means whatever steals your time is a true enemy if you lose money and gain it back you lose your reputation there are systems to build it back but when you lose time listen please 
It is because of this that the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise, it says, and not as unwise. And what is the wisdom there? Master anything you know in scripture that will help you to redeem time. He called it wisdom. That means when I explore the mysteries of the kingdom, it will give me an advantage over time. Are we together? If you lose time, there may not physically speaking be a way of gaining it back. But we thank God because we serve a God who does not live in time. We thank God because we serve a God who does not really even live in eternity. Because eternity is still a subject of time. It's just time without end. We serve a God who lives in a realm that the Bible calls unapproachable light. His realm is now. No past, no present. No future now the concept of distance time does not is not a reality that exists in his realm it was a borrowed phenomenon to help men catch up with him that god does not leave genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in the heavens he was not in the earth you can't create what you are inside are we together now, please sit down and pay attention so when we talk about the mystery of restoration we are trusting by the spirit of grace and wisdom to explore the systems of advantage listen it is on the strength of these mysteries that apostle paul will say for we know that all things all things do not just work just because we are christians there is a system of advantage we have that regardless that's why many times when you are complaining god really does not listen because in his realm it doesn't make any difference what you've lost or what you had it, it doesn't those realities are, are are vain it is within his power to reconstruct anything as though it never left so when you are saying god remember what i went through he says that, that is unnecessary there there are too many mysteries i can use to bring you back it's why it's painful to not trust god because it's an insult on his ability that even in heaven they are not done learning his ability in heaven without the constraint of the mortal nature with that heightened level of intelligence and through ages they have they have been students of god in heaven and yet they have not been able to comprehend so when the inhabitants on earth now begin to use the the temporary vacillations to insult the character of God is indicting on his nature. When God says he is God, it takes the spirit of God to help you understand the meaning of that statement. Now you be God, Almighty God. Listen to yourself. You know be man. Stop. Let me explain that to you. God is not a man. He only became a man. When you say God is a man, that means he must submit to someone. The person who created him must demand worship from him. But he became a man, meaning that it was an inconvenience he wore for, as a representation of love, not weakness. You see that? We are men, we are not God. We are men, but he made us. It's a translation. So that our dominion, this godlike dominion today, is not absolute dominion, it's shared dominion. Dominion that can be withdrawn as proof that it did not originate from you. You, you, you get what I'm trying to explain? Yes. So when, when we say God is not a man, and then the Bible says the man Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, it's not a contradiction. God is not a man, but he became a man so that he will reveal the extent of the love of the father but i assure you god is not a man hallelujah praise the lord genesis chapter 40 help us holy spirit the things that are written aforetime the bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope Genesis chapter 40 Just a little background This is the story of Joseph And his sojourn From his father's house To the place of destiny This is a classic On understanding the dynamics of destiny 
it is one of the classic expressions of how a man can transit himself from his father's house through the vicissitudes of life into a place of prophecy there is a spiritual road map through the life of joseph that if understood discerned and followed by any christian inevitably regardless of that which you face on the way you will emerge not only a champion but you will be a representation of the desire of god are we together yes this is very very powerful it's amazing pastor sir that when you begin your journey with god he never tells you what will happen on the way he will tell you that you will get to a land flowing with milk and honey so that you will set your gaze on that end but the dynamics of that journey is something that we must learn are we together please follow me genesis chapter 40 so um at this point a lot had happened to him his time in the house of potiphar and potiphar's wife who came around and said he raped her and cut the long story short he's in the prison now are we together and it came to pass 40 verse 1 after these things that the butler of the king of egypt and his baker had offended the lord of egypt verse 2 and pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in word in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison hmm. the place where joseph was bound stop there please look up very interesting rendition that there are times there is a location in destiny please keep that scripture where both good and bad people meet there is a location in destiny that does not necessarily depend on the accuracy of your work or otherwise the bible says two people who had offended the king came into the prison and to their shock they found out that the innocent was also in the prison that the godly was also in the prison that there is a place where both men of character and lack of character can meet there is a place where men who are sincere and passionate and those who are lazy and unserious will meet this is a very strange mystery are we together now so the discourse starts in the prison why will a good man and an evil man still find themselves in the same position a man who feared god who has shoot evil who on account of his integrity you would think that that man should just be defended and never even need to go through such a thing where is the scripture that says i was young and now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken please give us that scripture this is a revelation that will help us by the spirit to mature and edit our interpretation and also discern how god answers prayers because when god speaks to you you must understand what he's saying for instance mary's trouble started the day he said you are highly favored that means everything that follows god's statement in his eyes is called favor from the day god tells a woman you are highly favored she gets into trouble her stomach is protruding there are rumors all around and they are saying mary i thought you were a virgin and she says i still am and says so how do you explain this which rabbi came around and no 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 no. it was a ghost i met an angel who told me a ghost from heaven will come and that what is in my womb is a holy child you know how stupid that sounds and yet in the mind of god he calls it favor so could it be that what you are going through now that the devil is making you feel that it is defeat in the eyes of prophecy because a day will come the reward will be for only the, the person who the person who has passed through what you have passed through and if you have not gone through that kind of thing you cannot qualify for it are we together there are times in life where they will invite you to come and preach not because you can preach but you are the only one who have gone through what you have gone through and you have earned the right god calls it are we together that a day can come in your life look up please when the requirement will be the person who was never raised by a father 
never raised by a mother who among the people to be honored went through life on his own unassisted you will now find out that your 13 years of pain now put you in a position of exclusivity there is a monetary value to pain there is a destiny value to pain you must learn to read the writings on the wall so you do not call what is profitable a disaster is god helping us so back to the scripture we are exploring the mysteries of restoration the discourse starts with the prison are we still together that an innocent young boy who served the lord sincerely and you know the beautiful thing about scripture is that it gives you an opportunity to see the story from god's standpoint and from the standpoint of man it would have been a disaster if we did not have the opportunity to know the truth of the story because it would then alter our interpretation about joseph hmm. so good people and evil people can find themselves in the prison so jesus can be on the cross and yet two criminals are by his left and right and all of them are hanging on a cross so if they say give me the list of all who are hanging on the cross you will call jesus too as one of those hanging on the cross and by the interpretation of men anybody who hangs on the cross is a sinner except that one is hanging on the cross not for the sin he committed for himself it's a sacrifice for others this already should be a message to give us wisdom that when you see people go through things you cannot understand the secret is to pray for them and remain discerning because there are people carrying burdens they have no business carrying god part of the requirement of the grace they carry has compelled them to go through things that ordinarily they will never have gone through listen it's a mystery in the making of men is how compassion is built the ability to be touched with the feelings of inf of god's inf of of the infirmity of god's people do you know that if you are called into the healing ministry you will be surprised at the kind of training you will go through you will never be able to minister to people with a dimension of innocence there is a requisite level of association you must know what sickness does to people so that it will fuel compassion when you see someone on a wheelchair this is more than your ego there is there is a memory bank in your history where you can draw power from it would have been unfair for god to say men did not love him without becoming a man even though he was god he needed to become a man subject himself through the limitations of men and jesus was surprised that when he became a man he cried he was surprised that when he became a, are you getting blessed that when he became a man he was hungry and cursed a tree when he became a man he saw them insulting the house of god turning it into a place of merchandise he did not report them he flogged them now when he ascended to heaven as man he tells the father i was there i know what it means to come and preach on Sunday when there is a plethora of betrayal waiting for me as a man of God. I, I understand. I know what it means to be praying for people and praying for people and maybe your own family may be going through the same challenge. Yet the burden of ministry demands that you remain true and consistent. That you learn to look beyond yourself. There is a time when both Joseph and the wine presser can be in the prison. So if they ask you as an onlooker to give a judgment about all those you find in prison you can use the attitude of sarcasm to say i saw joseph i saw the wine presser imagine joseph in prison saying lord is this how you honor those who bless you and yet heaven was saying do you not see that you are just two years plus left to sit upon a throne and legislate on behalf of his majesty the thing about lifting is that five minutes to your rising it will still look like you will never rise are we blessed wherever we stop tonight we'll pray but we, we, we are discussing something deep and serious mm. that there are times where the opposite of success is failure but there are times 
where failure is part of success not the opposite of it there are times when god can pray some things out of your life but there are times he will give you the grace to pass through it it's a cup you must drink and a baptism you must be baptized by that is the qualification for intimacy can you drink of my cup the space to sit close to me is available but can you drink of my cup listen to me let me give you an advice respectfully speaking it is on account of this process of pain that he suffers no man to do them wrong the bible even says he rebukes king for their sake you see when you see a man of god stand what you see is the end product you do not see the journey that journey of pain builds an altar that is backed up by blood that even in the secret the jealousy of god is invested upon that altar believe me There are certain doors that you don't use a key. You use blood to open them. And there are men and women who have gone through this laborious... The training of the great is a training that God has to hold your hand to go through. Some of you right now, as I'm speaking to you, you are seated, you are in that season. Cry with honor. Do not be ashamed of your scar. What looks like a symbol of shame today will become your badge of honor. He said, let no man trouble me. I didn't jump classes in the spirit. Here are my scars. That Jesus showed his scars and the demons knew it. Paul showed his scars and the demons knew it. And he said, where is your own? You don't just tell somebody be healed and he's healed. No. You don't just say the power of God is moving because you found it in scripture. It's a joke. There is a track record. The price for life is death. The weight of God is too heavy. Only dead men can carry him. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20 where your ego dies. Many things happen in the prison. Are we together? Please listen to me. This is both a prophetic teaching and a prophetic roadmap to show you where you are now. There are times when you are in prison, you will be amazed that you will be praying over issues in your own life and you will not hear God. But someone comes to sit down for counseling, boom, and the heaven is open. And you are prophesying things and, and the person leaves believing that your whole life is in order. And when the person leaves, you say, God, but who, what is this? He's teaching you that silence is also a voice. That when God is silent, you must know what he's saying. Listen, it is in the prison that he teaches you to discern anointings. Yes, sir. In the prison, there is no ego. In the prison, there is no mic. In the prison, there is no apostle and prophet. In the prison, it purifies your hunger. Genesis 40. Joseph, pastor, is in the prison. He was there before them. Two offenders always come. Like they were at the cross. And now they meet this guy. Please give us that scripture. Genesis chapter 40. <laughs> the place where Joseph was bound. The place where character was bound. The place where a sincere heart was bound. Are we together? Then the Bible says, verse 4, And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in the world. Leave that scripture there. Did you see that the difference between an attack of the enemy and a season you are passing through is that even in the pit there is still the signature of dominion and favor the bible says even though it was in the prison there was a token that god left that let this be a signature oh joseph that when darkness is all around you remember that this seed of dominion is still within you now, for time's sake, the Bible tells us that Joseph served them, an offended man. Never did Joseph give them the history 
of how he got there he was more passionate about serving them and lifting them and heaven was marking that examination joseph had every legitimate ground to say young men don't disturb me with your noise you offended the king it's a shame that you got to the throne and you are still back to the pit i'm an innocent man with prophecy upon my head i've worked with character and integrity and now i find myself here but joseph said forget about me my focus is to see that you are lifted so then death works in us the bible says that life will work in you that you are trusting god to pay your rent as a man of god starting in ministry just when the money comes god says bring it to this ministry and sow it and you walk like someone who doesn't know what he's doing and while you are doing it an onlooker is saying this church thing is really making people mad and they do not know that there is a system of justice that is vetting the sincerity and the purity of your heart are we blessed mm. a prison is a place of confinement a prison is a place of delay a prison sometimes can be a place of slavery but i want to tell you prophetically a prison is a training ground it's a place where god trains you are we blessed the prison many of us are there now never trust people who do not have the history of a prison in their journey uh -uh. there is a requisite level of qualification that you're passing through the prison adds to your spiritual credentials as you minister on behalf of his majesty i don't want to know your story tell me your pain there are things i'm searching for i don't trust your compassion until i see what you've gone through if you have not been touched with the feelings of the infirmity i don't believe you truly love people there are things you go through that fuel genuine compassion when someone comes to your office and say man of god i'm not an irresponsible man this finance thing is not just working you don't laugh at him with sarcasm you say i've been there i serve god with my heart and suddenly the grace rises from that gate of compassion there are many talkatives in the body of christ without the history of the dealings of the spirit this is why compassion has not been able to come in the heart of many people There are people who love God and train their children as best as they could. Raise them in the way of God. And those children just decided to go wayward. Be careful when you begin to conclude and, anal and analyze on those things. And say, no, no, if you train that child well, it may not always be so. Even Jesus had to struggle with Judas, who beheld the word every day for three and a half years. While the crusade was going, a negotiation to make money out of Jesus was going on. Is God speaking to us tonight? The prison. For the sake of time, let's discuss the subject of losses. We cannot understand restoration. And we cannot understand coming back. Bouncing back. Until we understand losses. To lose means to part ways with something, someone valuable, or a time. To part way with time. To part way with something. To part way with someone. And I wrote down here, very quickly we'll look at it. Five scriptural reasons why people lose anything at all. Five scriptural reasons now these reasons capture both the training of the believer and a caution to a careless one are we together number one the first reason according to scripture why people lose is lack of discernment please make sure you write it down hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 please help us media hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the first reason why people lose in this kingdom is lack of discernment it says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep 
It was while men slept, the Bible says, that the enemy came as a farmer too and planted something. So it says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give you light. Lack of discernment. In Genesis chapter 28, the story of Jacob's encounter at Luz that he would later call Peniel. It was the encounter where he saw a ladder ascending from the earth to the heaven. When you go to verse 16 of Genesis 28, the Bible says Jacob himself counseled himself and rebuked himself. He woke up from sleep. So the problem was sleep. He woke up from sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. There are many people who have lost seasons because they could not discern. There are many people who have lost relationships because they could not discern. There are many people who have missed an opportunity to receive territorial anointings because they could not discern. Discernment. Lack of discernment. Number two, for time's sake, we have to rush. The second reason why people lose in this kingdom and then in life and destiny is carelessness. The second biblical reason why people lose is carelessness. An attitude of non-challenge to life, non-challenge to destiny, non-challenge to work. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? That means bondage is imminent for anybody who lives a life of negligence. Are we together? Carelessness. Taking life for granted. Taking things for granted. Taking opportunities for granted. Oh, there's a free mentorship session with my pastor. But what is that about? I mean, I can always get it. Careless approach to life. One day I'll be anointed. I, I think there's, there's always time. All this fasting and prayer is, uh, is an interruption to my life. Carelessness. He says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. There is timing with destiny. Every time is not the right time. Every time is not convenient. He says, while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? In athletics, in football, and most sports, they have an age range. No matter how passionate you are about it, once you pass that age range, sorry for you. Football, they have an age range. Tennis, and all of these sports, they have an age range. Athletics, it is important for you to know that there is timing to destiny. So carelessness, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. Revelations 3 and verse 11. Read with me please if you are a Christian and you can see it. I want to read. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast that no man carelessness. Let it never be for you that let his bishopric let another take. Carelessness. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, laws of the kingdom. Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, the laws of the kingdom. Psalm 82 and verse 5. That ignorance is a plague in this kingdom. It says they know not. Neither will they understand. That they walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Lack of light. Verse 6 says. I have said. All of you are gods. And you are children of the most high. The tragedy is in the next verse. Verse 7. It says. But you shall die like mere men. And fall like one of these princes. Ignorance. Ignorance is a terrible plague. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, it says. Not because you are tired of sitting there. 
for your light has come not because your light is around it's always been around but the day comes to you ezekiel chapter 2 when you read from verse 1 and 2 he had an instruction rise up and he had no strength he says but the spirit entered into me verse 2 and set me upon my feet it takes light it takes an understanding of the ways of god many people are ignorant of the ways of god we just live our lives sociologically sadly you hear this all around our society why sayings like one day go better why sayings like um i know one day one day things will change you see all those kinds of thinkings will be to our own peril our lives must be intentional the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully the quality of my life and your life is predicated on our depth of spiritual illumination our understanding the ways of god not just a religious study of scripture but study of scripture that reveal to us the keys of the kingdom are we blessed number four why do we lose in life and in this kingdom abuse and misuse the fourth reason why we lose abuse and misuse in matthew 25 the parable of the talents when you read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the bible talks about the parable of three men who were given talents one was given five the other two one the bible says the one with five went and traded it and returned back with a hundred percent the other one with two returned back with a hundred percent and the one who had one already he had an attitude of bitterness and jealousy and anger and he went and buried it you bury seeds not talents and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting my time let me bury it here is your seed and god called him wicked and unprofitable that everything god gives you let me tell you something you see we talk a lot about transfer whether well transfer or it's not only unbelievers that good things leave believers who have who have a track record of abuse and misuse will also lose things because god is a god of of caution and he's a god of responsibility if you are hungry and he feeds you with five loaves and two fish and you now eat and you are full and carelessly waste the rest he will say go and gather the crumbs but tomorrow you can be sure you will not get that bread again god was so meticulous he showed us a sense of responsibility and caution when all those guys ate and they littered everywhere and left he said go and gather the crumbs and they gathered 12 baskets full abuse there are people who have abused power there are people who have abused and misused money there are people who have abused and misused the anointing abused and misused leadership africa as a continent is in a plague today sadly because of different levels of abuse and misuse of authority and power the fifth reason why we lose in this kingdom it can be because of the tests and the trials that we are going through it is possible that because of the dealings and the trainings you are going through in the spirit for the sake of your destiny momentarily certain things can be withdrawn from your life that is true the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that during your period of training it was apostle james chapter 1 from verse 2 please give it to us james 1 and verse 2 he said count it all joy my brethren when you go through diverse temptations secure your stability with this knowledge he says knowing this james chapter 1 from verse 2 knowing this that the trying of your faith he says works patience are we together verse 3 and that when patience has had its full work in you it will be able to build you paraphrasing so that you may be perfect and entire wanting the word wanting there is lacking nothing so sometimes god takes things from you so that tomorrow you will not have any lack again 
there are times that God will take your seed of today away from you so that tomorrow you will not need to beg again. It is not, listen, God does not just give. He also takes away. But when He takes away, it really is an, a spiritual investment because with God it will always come back. Hallelujah. Yes. So these are the five reasons that I piece together from Scripture as to why people lose. A quick recap. Number one, that people lose because of lack of discernment. That people lose because of carelessness. That people lose because of ignorance of the laws of life, destiny and the kingdom. That people lose because of abuse and misuse. But then that there are times that this group of people, because of the seasons that they are in with God, the season of dealing, that they can go through tests and trials. Job chapter 1 when you read from verse 9, the whole text is from verse 9 to 22. Job chapter 1 from verse 9 to 22. But let's look at at least 9, 10 and 11. The Bible says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Next verse. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Now hear what Satan says. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse you to your face. In other words, Job's allegiance and loyalty to you, O oh God, is fake. He is only saying it on the strength of those things. The next verse. That should be 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, very scary scripture, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then, sin two is what begins to happen in the earth. There was a day. The Bible calls it a day of adversary. That in every man's life, there is such a phenomenon a day of adversary that if you turn aside in that day the diagnosis is that your strength is small hallelujah i wrote here keys for restoration let's hurry up and touch on them so we can pray now that we have seen the factors that are responsible for losses Please don't just write these things, study them and see where it applies to your life. For some of you it is lack of discernment. You see, seasons are like the hand of a clock. When you miss it, it may come back, but you will have to wait a very long time. So like the magi, the wise men, you have to be discerning. To discern moments that you can capitalize on. Keys for restoration. It is true that God is a restorer. It is true that God can restore. Hallelujah. Such a powerful comfort for the saints. That no matter what you've lost. The mystery, I hope that we'll be able to deal with it. Is that everything that leaves you is still on earth. Now that's a very good news. If it leaves me and it is still on earth, then there is hope for recovery. And scripture says there is hope for a tree. Do you know why there is hope for a tree? Because provided the earth from where it came out from is still there, there is hope for a tree. There are four keys that I wrote here that are prophetic roadmaps. I wish we had time to walk this as seen in the life of Joseph. But if any one of you in this assembly, following online from any part of the world, if you walk through this process, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture, regardless what the situation is, you truly will come out. Are we together? This is where I want you to pray. In one minute, cry and say, Lord, open my eyes. No assumptions. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, that that which you are about to show, because many of us are at this point now, haven't explained to you the mystery of the prison, haven't explained to you the mystery of the losses around your life and destiny, whether it was for a genuine reason or otherwise. I am showing you a prophetic roadmap by the Spirit.
that a way out can come if you can see. Shila parus yata hashkada barundes. Are we blessed? Now look up. Please receive with meekness these truths that I want to teach you. The first key I have found if you want to experience restoration in your life, your family, your spiritual life, your finances, your destiny, the first key to restoration according to scripture is self examination and evaluation. The first biblical key to experience lasting restoration the power of self examination not just prayer not just fasting not just finding a man of god in that order of priority self examination there is nobody who receives restoration in this kingdom if you cannot sit down and be thoughtful Second Corinthians chapter three and verse five. Help us, media. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse. Oh dear, Luke. Let's look at Luke fifteen. Luke fifteen. I wrote a scripture there that I can't seem to find. Luke fifteen from verse seventeen to twenty. The Bible talks about the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son. Remember the story? The Bible says how that that gentleman provided he was staying with his father. He was not satisfied coming under the authority of his father. And he wanted to live life at his own terms. And then scripture reveals that he left and lived a riotous life for many years. Notice lack started when he left his father. Now, the story of the prodigal son is not the story of sinners because it's a family it has nothing to do with sinners number two for your information the story of the prodigal son is the story of two people with the same lifestyle the only difference is one acted out his own whereas the other hid his own in the heart both the elder brother and the old and the younger brother did the same thing the only thing is that the younger brother was fast to act out his own rebellion but the elder brother also had his own hidden there. Are we together now? So the Bible talks about this gentleman who later finds himself with the swine, pigs, eating from them. And then read verse 17, please. The first five words or six words. One to go. And when he came to... The Bible never said when an angel appeared to advise him. Listen, human beings have their wills and you can sit down and think through life. Please keep that scripture there. He came to himself. How do you come to yourself? By thinking. There is the voice of your heart. The Bible says, say not in your heart. So you don't just think. You can speak in your heart. He came to himself. He said, how many hired servants? It's called the power of thoughtfulness. If you can take an introspect of your life and your destiny. Self-examination. Are we together? Many people never rise from the shackles of life and destiny because they are preoccupied by offense and will not sit down and examine their own lives. Why am I like this? Why is my church not growing? Lord, you called me. Why is it that my pastor continues to prophesy over my life and people testify here every week? I am a faithful worker and according to the authority of scripture, I am a bona fide partaker of the grace upon the man of God. Why is it not speaking in my life? He came to himself. There are times you need to go for a retreat, not just to pray. The Bible says, be still and know. There is a kind of knowledge that stillness brings. Are we together? That you go and lock yourself and sit down quietly and say something must be wrong. He came to himself. January, this happened. Just when I was recovering, my wife got sick. 
Just when she was recovering, my child got sick. Just when he was recovering, no, no, no. This is more than sickness. I see that there is the handwriting of Satan wanting to destroy my thoughtfulness. It's unfortunate that we live in a world where we are preoccupied by activities. And so thoughtfulness now is a luxury. But believers, hear me. In this end time, we must trust God for grace to hide away from people. If you're a man of God here, respectfully, this is an honest advice. You will never be a cutting-edge tool in this end time. If you, the, the, the gallancy and the flamboyancy of ministry can deceive us into believing that just because activities are around, Joshua Selman, it means we are making progress. We need to sustain the courage and the stamina to go back. In fact, in the spirit, the more God honors you, he does it by hiding you. That everything that is glorious is hidden. If all of you is seen by all men, you are not powerful. And when Rebecca saw Isaac, she veiled herself as a proof that she was a bride befitting for him. As soon as she saw Isaac, the one she would be connected to, she veiled herself. It is the reason why your heart is hidden. It is the reason why the sensitive or comely parts of your body like Apostle Paul was teaching are hidden don't be embarrassed when god hides you he's hiding you as proof of the value he has for you are we together but we're dealing with self-examination the young man sat down one day and came to himself he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father he said and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy he had not gone no. he was discussing self-examination that in the name of Jesus, I will not be a lazy man in this Abuja again. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. I know there is a portion for me. I have been giving excuses and saying all my family members are like that. I know my father did not train me. I know I did not have the leverage of uncles and aunties. But if I continue to give this excuse, I will find out one day I'm 50 years, 60 years, 70 years giving excuses. From today I make up my mind. Self-examination. This life of disobedience and dishonor to my pastor. Every time he's prophesying, I stand and I say, Oh, I'm the one washing his car. And for five years, I've not received any testimony. I come back to myself. I'm coming for this service with my heart open. And if my pastor is prophesying, I will not just see him as my pastor. He is God's apostolic voice to me. Self-examination. Fear a man who has sat down to think. He's ready to rise. Listen, let me tell you how restoration came to Samaria. I wish we had time, we would have walked scripture tonight. The Bible says there were four lepers. For as long as they were silent and not thinking, they remained on the ground. But when prophecy came, the spirit of wisdom landed on them. And they began to think and contemplate. Why sit we here till we die? They began a conversation. Charlie Paru Let's get up. If we fall into their hands, at least let's take that risk and make meaning out of our destiny. Instead of sitting down and giving excuses, Nigeria is not working. Let me go and look for land at least somewhere. I may not have the money to buy it, but they will not arrest me for seeing. Let me, let me, let me trust God for grace. examination no I, I, I think reverend Abba is too busy to see me I need this grace and I keep seeing him in my dreams but I'm sure one day by God's divine mercy he will connect us you are joking you are really joking one day you have to sit down and ask yourself am I ready to sit here in pride or humble myself and pursue like the woman with the issue of blood and you may get up and say I will come and sit in the church here on that day God will say my son please come around and just stroll you see the, the prodigal son didn't need to reach home before he met his father that means the father was already walking too but he needed to examine himself and take a step of faith someone say in the name of Jesus please shout it say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to sit down and be thoughtful 
I kill every excuse over my life, my ministry, my destiny. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Why I remain small, why I fail, I'm tired of giving excuses. Why the unction of the Spirit is not upon my life. There are enough anointed vessels for my life to change. Someone is praying. Please be serious. Pray. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. I'm tired of laziness. Come to yourself. Shivarus Kadiva Hashalada. One more minute as you pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I want you to enter a covenant with your destiny tonight that I'm going to go back home and ask questions. We have an altar in our family. It's not new. The altar brought my grandfather. He brought my father. So I'm suspecting that's what is happening. I'm sure one day I'll think about it. Oh my goodness. Oh no sir. Oh no sir. One day you have to wake up by 2 a.m. and say sleep. You hang on. I am sick and tired of this. I come to myself that what killed my father and God opens your eyes to see that there is an arrow looking for your destiny and for your children and you stand with power and fire self-examination it was God's servant Bishop Oyedeko that said when they started the church in Kaduna listen to me I started ministry in Zaria I know the spirits and the altar in that territory the lifespan of impact is three years if you reach three years, something must bring you down and bring your ministry out in shame. So I understand what you were saying. Because there are ancient gates. And he said the church was not growing. He would have given the excuse. But he said, you know what? Let's gather a few of the leaders. And they began to examine, to contemplate. Suddenly the Spirit of God brought him out according to him and showed him a thick layer of darkness that misrepresents the ministry. And he, he did something about it and all of a sudden doors open. Why are my younger brothers feeding me? Why am I the one who I am the one who invites all of them for encounter programs and yet at this level of life I've not been able to build a house at this it's not like your faith is tied to those things but hear me there has to be a consolation to your Christian experience if by and large fruits do not grow on that tree life will not give you forever as an excuse are we together until you love your destiny more than sleep, you are not ready to rise. There are times when you should, it's not an attack. You just sit down and you are angry and say, look, my wife, wake up. We need to discuss this thing. What is going on in this family? Abuja is a good land. Someone came to Abuja in January and right now they have seen the faithfulness of God. We've been here since 1998. Something is wrong. We confess our ignorance, but for starters, let us come to that point of recognition. I can assure you, if we call God's servant, your pastor and father today, to come and hold this mic and tell you his story of sojourn through this land, I am sure that we are going to weep in this place like a funeral, a testament of audacity and power, waking up in the night. Thank God for your dream. Joseph had a dream, but you wake up to fulfill it. Dreams are powerful, but they don't happen in the realm of the spirit. Men who dream, wake up. Can you prophesy? Say, myself, wake up. One more time. Myself, wake up. Don't be embarrassed. This is a conference. Myself, wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wake up. He came to himself. Number two. Few minutes and we're done tonight. The second key that provokes restoration in this kingdom is the power 
of brokenness psalm 51 and verse 17 it is not enough to examine yourself you must get to a point where the bible says that the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit he says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise that means god cannot ignore a broken person brokenness requires many things a recognition and then you have to admit brokenness lord it is my i've been living life at my own terms i am sure it's my pride that has brought me to this place and lord i'm not ashamed i go down on my knees to you who is the maker of the heavens and the earth if you don't help me in this city i cannot rise i come before you there's nothing to be ashamed of brokenness brokenness is a very powerful mystery As a man of God, you come to God broken. Lord, I love you, but lately I found out I've just been doing ministry just for the sake of money. And it may not be that I'm evil, but sincerely I think uh, maybe, maybe there are things in my life. I'm, 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 there, 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 are, there are too many compromises, but I come before you sincerely. There is one thing I know about God. When God sees brokenness, he cannot ignore it. Genuine brokenness. Hallelujah. Brokenness. Where you open up your heart sincerely like the psalmist. And say, search my heart and try my thoughts. Check, oh God, if thou see any evil way in me, please lead me to the way everlasting. Some of you here, if you are broken enough, you will come out of that situation. The problem is you are still giving explanations and then hoping. You see, this pride is a dangerous thing. Whatever you do, fight pride from your life. You cannot do bold face for life. You have to just humble yourself and say, Lord, show me mercy and help me. A broken and a contrite heart. Number three. What is the third key that sponsors restoration in this kingdom? Are we making progress? Knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. Knowledge. You need knowledge. A recognition of the grace and the mercy of God is important, but you need knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The B part is my part of emphasis. It says, through knowledge shall the just be what? There is a kind of deliverance that is conducted by casting out the spirit influences behind that situation. But there is a kind of deliverance that happens as a fortification through knowledge. The Bible says to preach deliverance, not only to conduct it. There is a dimension of revelation that secures deliverance. Everyone please say knowledge. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 Amplified says Arise from the prostration and the depression That circumstances have kept you It says rise to a new light You see It's important for us to know That we need light Light enough Not just light Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem If you had known even in this that time The things that pertain unto your peace He says but now they are hidden from your eyes You need to go for knowledge Gather the tapes of your pastor Gather the CDs Take a three days time of fasting and prayer And sit down and flog it out with destiny Lord open my eyes what is the key to speed? Open my eyes. What is the key to sustainable influence? Open my eyes. Why are my hands empty? Lord, open my eyes. And while you are listening to the message, suddenly, as the man of God is ministering, light breaks. 
Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. God will open your eyes to explain to you the mystery of an empty hand. He said, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall pass that when we go, ye shall not go empty. Lord, why have I not gotten a property, whether for myself or something? I know there is a way. Psalm 44, I think, verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. So this is not a, a thing of sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Luke 2, 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Esther chapter 2 from verse 15, the B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 now says, same scripture. It says, And Esther was loved by the king above all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than suddenly you begin to pray it in your life and walk those keys and your life will change like day and night is god helping us we need knowledge Please fight ignorance like you fight Satan. Fight ignorance. Ignorance is a dangerous thing. In this end time, you cannot live your life wishing and hoping. You must get exact knowledge. The Bible says to walk circumspect as wise and unwise. Arrange the various aspects of your life where you are trusting God for sustainable lifting. And fish out the mysteries that connect your desires to your destiny what is responsible for speed what is responsible for church growth what is responsible for transgenerational impact and influence what is responsible for ever increasing fire what is responsible for the anointing of the spirit what is responsible for relevance within the context of a generation there are mysteries that control these dimensions it is the glory of god to hide a thing but it's the honor of the kings to search it out. I was teaching in Lagos and I gave a parable that the Lord opened my eyes to see. Theologically, it's called the parable of the lost coin. The Bible says that a woman lost her coin in a room. She knew that there was a precious jewel in that room that could make her wealthy, could make her great, but it was missing. And the first thing she did was to light a candle light you cannot search in darkness the second thing she did was to find a broom with that broom she swept everywhere that's how we search for things a candle and a broom a broom talks of your hunger and your consistent pursuit you sweep by getting all the tapes your pastor preached on faith you don't get one or two because you may find part one of the revelation that will liberate you here. Then you now go to a 2016 message and find the other parts that God is building for you. It's called sweeping. You need light enough. I made a statement a few days ago. Morning, the breaking of day, does not depend on time. It depends on the victory of light over darkness. Every time light prevails over darkness, you call it day. It is not when it is 6 o'clock or 8 a.m. that you say it's day. No. All through the night, there is a warfare between darkness and light. The time that light wins is what you call day. So if light wins by 2 a.m., it will become day. Are we together? Knowledge. Knowledge. I have cherished knowledge as a man of God and I have cherished knowledge as a person. I am, I am a passionate seeker of knowledge. I am not embarrassed by the things I do not know. My heart is very open. When I find truth that is relevant to my life and destiny, I am like a sponge. My heart is open unashamedly. The proof of passion is pursued. 
you have to trust God for grace to pursue knowledge. You will never gain knowledge at your own terms. Dr. Modok would say adaptation is proof of honor. You have to bend. Getting knowledge from those who carry them will require stamina and sacrifice. I'm sorry to say it, but we live in an arrogant generation that want to be great at our own terms. Let the pastor see me. I can, my, I'm busy. Uh, I can, I'm, I'm only free between 11 and 12. Please, see me then and pray for me. You are in trouble. No. The woman with the issue of blood kept asking. She was just hoping. She knew Jesus would pass. Ask the men and the women of God who carry real grace. They will tell you the story of their endurance as they pursued God and they pursued vessels that really carried fire. Many of them would travel for conferences they have no business attending and will sit down quietly like fools. I've shared my testimony many years ago. I was in a Reinhard Bonke crusade. There was a grace upon him that I desired, Pastor. I traveled down to Joss. He was coming for a crusade. I didn't just sit down and say, Oh God, this is the grace I want. You are the giver of all good things. If you've been evil, know how to and quote those scriptures out of context that legitimize laziness and mediocrity. I went and stood on that crusade ground for six hours the first night. I watched this man minister. I have revelation. I'm a man of God too. I've seen miracles in my own life too. But you will never receive from a colleague in this kingdom. There must be spiritual potential difference. It is through light and knowledge. Please listen. I will never forget the second day. I made up my mind that I'm not only going to come and stand on that crusade ground. Lord, I want to serve. I understand the power of service. And I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs. I said, please, can I help? They said, no, no, no. These people belong to a committee. They are trained. I said, committee or no committee? You don't know how long I travel to be here. I must serve. While I was pushing the people to the front, I said, Lord, this is how my crusades and my meetings will be too. I stole with honor and with passion. All I need is you. All I need is you. All I need is you. Ah, the second day he preached a very simple message. And he was about to take water and minister the baptism. When God opened my eyes. That was the first time I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit like a dove. It was a dove that was bigger than this building. Bring round the crusade ground. I thought everybody was seeing it. I was watching. He was about to minister. The miraculous was about to happen. I had seen miracles. I had seen unbelievable situations by the Spirit of God. Listen. When you find what you need, break your pride. Pay the price. Pursue sincerely. Allow fools and mediocres to make comments while you receive. We know that God is taking your master today. Save Johnny. And Elisha said, I know you are a temperous man, Elijah. Keep insulting me while I position to receive. Do you have the stamina to endure? Let me tell you, anointed vessels are difficult people. Some of them are arrogant. Some of them are insensitive. Do you have the stamina to look past those things and say, I know what my heart searches for. I can't be so selfish to allow my ego rob a generation of a dimension of God. The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elijah. When that grace landed upon my life, I remember many years ago the Lord gave me an instruction that he was going to lead me to God's servant to go and sow a seed, Bishop David Oedeko. And that morning God told me this was the day. I will not tell you how much, but many of you will be surprised. I got up, got the next available flight, I went. Behind every story, there is, behind what is, every glory, there is a real story. Oh. Before you admire men, find out their story. Nothing works by mistake. There's nobody who wins the Olympic by mistake. 
I want you to cherish your pastor sincerely. Not every man of God will open up their scars to you to watch. No, the pain is too precious. I remember long and short when so the seed when I came out, the Holy Ghost asked me to put my hand on the ground there in Canaan land and said, From today you have entered the overflow anointing. I'm a product of many anointings. It takes knowledge. Knowledge with hunger and passion. Hunger and passion. The sacrifice of your pastor bringing vessels of grace to minister to you should be a clear proof that he sincerely loves you. You know, members, sometimes I say this respectfully, we need to honor the sacrifice. We never know the adaptation and the sacrifice that the servants of God go through for the sake of the sheep. He says a good shepherd lays down, inconveniences himself for his sheep. Can I talk on the last part and then we'll pray? Can you lend me five minutes? What I'm about to share with you will change your life forever. Please pray as I share with you a mystery. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. I apologize for taking your time, but it will be worth your sacrifice in this conference. Because what I'm about to show you is what many of you have been praying for. Lord, why is my life like this? You need real restoration. Behold, like he says, I show you a mystery. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. Siba kalu sadam brahas kadiba latu siatalakasia. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in where? Prison houses. They are for a prey and none deliverant. They are for a spoil, and there is no voice that saith, Restore. In this kingdom, you do not have the power to bring yourself out of prison. You will have to depend on someone who is already out of that prison. The Bible says, The king sent for Joseph and brought him out of the dungeon. The fourth key. That brings restoration is the ministry of the prophetic. The ministry of the prophetic. Now, I know that, respectfully speaking, all across this land, Africa, and the entire globe, there has been quite some excesses errors imbalances and outright failure in the administration of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic especially i know that there have been excesses and all of those things these things are not hidden we say it with the heart of respect and honor for the body of christ but it is true and so in a bid to manage these things there are people who are who continue to advocate the complete annihilation of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry as a way of managing the imbalances and the excesses no jesus said in matthew 26 i will build my church so he's the architect you go to him to find out how he builds the church and this is how he builds the church he said jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone that immediately you encounter jesus there are two ministries you must meet the apostolic and the prophetic to be built this is how jesus designed the church that even in heaven the foundations are made of the 12 names of the apostles are we together Jesus, the Son of God, is in heaven desiring to come to the earth. And not even him in his power had the right to come into this territory without someone calling him. So Anna the prophetess had to spend years speaking 
and calling the word you just know that the word became flesh but do you know there were prophecies that made the word flesh number one when jesus was born they quickly took him to these people jesus jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years even as the son of god no mention of his heavens opened until he went to find the prophet who god was using before he came over that territory now let me show you a mystery why many people remain grounded john was not a baptist john was a prophet baptism was a strategy given to him to identify jesus so he will baptize and look up you say go he will baptize and look up you say go he will baptize and look up you say go baptize and look up you say go suddenly ah, by the prophetic he identifies a young 30 year old man and he says behold the lamb you are not a man men see a man but a prophet is seeing a lamb that takes away the sins of the world I am not worthy to untie the latchets of your shoe I'm sure if Jesus if Joshua Selman were Jesus you say that's nice for recognizing that I'm not a small man but John made a statement that is a prophetic instruction suffer it to be so this is an ordinance if I do not submit to what you represent my own heavens cannot open this is your Bible John and God is watching in heaven John dips Jesus in the water he comes out and your Bible says and the heavens open. and the Holy Ghost descended and then the father spoke he said this is my beloved son question what was he before listen please this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he gave F an instruction nobody could break. Hear ye him. Who has told your church that? Who has told your products that? Has somebody told your products, Abuja? Hear ye him. I show you why many people are grounded. Even when Apostle Paul met Jesus Christ, Jesus still referred him back to the house of Ananias and said, wait there. Why do you need to see a man when you have met Jesus? And he said, still wait. There is a system I have built for your lifting. Let me show you a mystery. You see, the dimensions of God that are distributed to the earth for the edification of the saints happen through covenants let me explain to you what that means faith healing god hides his anointing primarily in men are we together now the way god works it out is that he calls he finds men in every dispensation and then through the sacrifice of alignment he enters a personal covenant with them not old testament not new testament a covenant with them that becomes the legitimate platform for administering that dimension of his grace within the lifespan of that dispensation now when god finds such people he now refers them on earth as the custodians of that dimension of him any other person who must enjoy that dimension of him experientially must do it in recognition and alignment to those systems they are not just men they have become true covenant spiritual systems that administer dimensions of god are we together provided they are alive god will never ignore their office in reaching you with that dimension let me give you an instance on earth today the spiritual system according to the wisdom of god that represents faith is kenneth copeland any man of god on earth that is operating faith that is tangible would have crossed that path to touch with that altar of alignment 
the man that represents the healing ministry today on earth it doesn't mean he's the greatest healer no this is not about greatness it's about the election of grace of an individual who has become the spiritual conduit of a dimension that individual today on earth is Benny Him. And that grace came upon him from Oral Roberts. Now, you need to, this is the protocol of lifting that many people do not understand. So, when God says, I'm calling you into a healing ministry, I don't care how He starts dealing with you. One day, He is going to orchestrate. I mean healing ministry at a global level. One day he's going to create a meeting point where you and that spiritual system that administered that dimension, you will collide. It's true. Did you read in your Bible that Abraham met a strange man in an ancient city called Salem, called Melchizedek? Is it in your Bible? That God established his priesthood after that order. Melchizedek looked at Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High. He called him possessor of heaven and earth. Elijah was not a prophet. Elijah was a spiritual system that foreruns revival. That's why the Bible says before the Lord comes, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. Elijah is the name given to a, a spiritual, apostolic, and prophetic system that realigns men back to the purposes of God. The name of that system is Elijah. It, a man only embodied it. That was why when Elijah died, the system continued in John. Just like Jezebel is not a woman. Jezebel is a system of rebellion that administers the system of Babylon by Attaching herself to power and authority. Elijah dies. Jezebel dies. Elijah resurrects in John. Jezebel resurrects in Herodias. Jezebel promised Elijah to remove his head. And then we see that when they dance on the king's birthday, they say, what request will be granted? Listen to me. Let me teach you a mystery. The men you see that walk this earth are young, but what is upon them is ancient. It's the continuity of a relay. You have to understand this. I wish I were lying. I would have just apologized and would share the grace. But I'm showing you something that is a deep mystery. Challenges are not generic. They are dependent on the grace and the altar that confronts it. You can be going through something for decades. But the day you find the prophet sent, not the prophet available. The prophet sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But to none was Elijah sent. The word that delivers is not the word you read. It is the word sent. We're about to pray. They are taken for a prey and none say it. Now listen to me. When you discern who your man of God is, for as long as you think he's a man of God, is a pastor, and we are members of this church, you will never receive anything. There must be a deep contemplation of discernment. Who is this man? Know we no man after the flesh. What are the mysteries that sit upon his head that are responsible for the possibilities in his life? It is based on that revelation that you stand to receive. You can kneel down and yet you are standing up. That, that is just a, an emotional show. I mean a deep-seated recognition. I have met people that I know I was sent to. And it's amazing how what they call challenges were trivialized. Happy are you when you find the anointing sent to you. Let me tell you this. Not every anointing available will lift you. Are we together? There are men of God that require... I'm not just talking of someone higher than you speaking to you. There is a place for that. I'm not just talking of someone who is an elder in the faith just prophesying to you. There is a place for that. I'm talking of encountering the grace 
the spiritual covenant that is connected to your destiny ignorant people will fight what i'm saying to their peril listen i don't boast to know everything in the kingdom i remain a student gleaning from the wisdom of men and women helped by god but on this revelation i tell you it is an office i know what i'm saying you know you have received when your results show thou anointest my head with oil but the results are seen in my cup it does not anoint your cup the cup is a report card it's showing what is in your head because my cup is empty about to pray and I want us to do something prophetic in two minutes forgive me but I, I share the burden of your pastor I'm going to pray for you but I will respectfully plead even if it is for one minute that your pastor and your father please come to stand on this stage and by the Spirit of God he's going to utter words of restoration believe what I am telling you you will many of you Tomorrow will not come until your life starts changing. It's true. I didn't have time to do a thorough exegesis of the word. You will read the, the arrogance and the foolishness of men to the prophetic. The prophet says by this time tomorrow. There are two dimensions of the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. And there is the creative dimension of the prophetic. The most superior dimension of the prophetic revealed to men is the creative dimension. Revelation gives you direction and then it imparts faith. Creation makes what has no business happening to happen. When he said by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing in advance what would have happened anyway. No. The same way you are going back home quietly and someone can look at you and by the mantle and the unction, he can program a climate of favor on your head and say go. A man's donkey is missing for three days. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and could not get the donkey. But the moment Saul saw Samuel, they didn't talk about the donkey. Just an eye contact and the donkey started going back home. This is not human worship. Please discern what I'm telling you. And don't, don't mix it with some of these things that people do. But right now we want to pray. In one minute. I don't know how you are going to cry to God. But please cry to God. And say, Father, every dishonor that I've communicated to this grace, because of lack of discernment, I obtain mercy tonight. And I receive with an open heart. I desire my life to change. I understand the ministry of the prophetic. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Your life is about to change. Lift your voice and pray. Shilaparus kadibala satasya. Rekete badusa sikete balanda shalakato prahasadia. We're about to pray. What a life you will never be the same. Someone is praying. Father, the grace to be broken, the grace to examine myself, the grace to passionately pursue knowledge, the grace to discern and open up my heart and my spirit to the prophetic. You are the covenant keeping God. You are covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Covenant keeping ya Sila Bashalanda Salasha Braski Barita Hasha. One more time. You are, you are the covenant keeping. 
Let me speak over your life and then your pastor will come and speak again. We do not stand sufficient in ourselves. We are only but products of His mercy and products of His grace. But let me tell you this, if you open up your heart to discern, you will marvel and wonder at what happens to your life from tonight. In the name of Jesus. I stand by the spirit of grace over your life inside, outside the overflows and those following online. Every prison, spiritually, shilakata, financially, that you have found yourself in, in the name of Jesus, who is the help them, please. Jesus. Who is the son of the living God? Come out of that prison now. Come out of that prison now. Come out of that prison now. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Every gate, ancient gates, ancestral gates, locked up by witchcraft, help them please. I'm prophesying to someone, every altar that sits upon your destiny, I will not let you go. You are fasted and you are prayed. I come in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I command fire on those altars now. Fire on those altars now. Fire on those altars now. Every opportunity you have lost, every relationship you have lost, in the name of Jesus, I call upon my God, the restorer of time, and I speak to you. Between now and the end of this year, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. Recover now. Believe what you are hearing. Recover now. Hallelujah. And the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. I don't know who in this city has been ordained to send for you. But I stand in the name of Jesus. And I speak to the north of Abuja. The south, the east and the west. Whoever must send for you. To bring you out of that dungeon. I command that they send for you now. I command that they send for you now. I command that they send for you now. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. Alas, Master, it was borrowed. And he said, we have sell it. Let me speak to someone here. That financial debt is sitting on your head. Sitting on your ministry. And it looks like there is no way out. I call upon the God of Jeshurun. The one who rides upon the wings of the wind. And I declare, according to the time of life. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hear me. 
The Bible says the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. Every scheming of hell over your family, over your destiny to keep you grounded in the name of Jesus. He said, lose that man and let him go. I command be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, Many a day that rise up against me, he said, Many a day which say, Where is thy help? He said, But thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. He says, You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I decree and declare, Every horn, according to Zechariah 1 verse 18, That has lifted up his head against your destiny, O Judah, O city of peace, O city of praise, O city of worship, I come as a carpenter, by the spirit of grace and I declare unto you in the name of Jesus those horns are judged now those horns are judged now hallelujah I declare the grace you didn't come with may that grace rest upon you and go with you and Samuel prophesied to Saul and said, The donkey you are looking for has been found. Before you reach home, some of you, I decree and declare that what has been missing for a long time, you will see it waiting for you. Number two, he said you will see three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give to you. I don't care who has rejected you and who refused to attend to the matters of your destiny. But I stand upon this sacred altar. I compel them to attend to you. In the name of Jesus. There are ancient giftings. Many of you have had dreams and revelations. You've seen some of these impartations for yourself and your ministry. This is the season where you come with your heart open to receive. And I pray for you that even beginning from tonight, let God begin to do strange workings in your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, help me. And if our God is for us, and if our God is with us, one more time. And if our God is for us, and if our God is with us, then what? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Matthew chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6 I want to discuss a very very deep spiritual subject this is one of those subjects in the Christian faith that has been seldom understood there has been exaggerations of it in many cases complete ignorance of it and yet this is a mystery that has controlled the backwardness, the retrogression, the oppression, and the defeat of many believers, many families, many businesses, many ministries, many territories, many nations. And I trust in the name of Jesus Christ that this word comes to liberate remember the theme is a call to rise back to the place of destiny hallelujah praise the name of the lord matthew chapter 6 it's interesting how jesus began to mentor the disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb 
he took out time to teach them on the matters of the kingdom hallelujah he began his discourse with what we know as the beatitudes teaching them the character of the kingdom he began to expose them to another system of operation until then they were used to the operations of the roman government and now he was introducing them to kingdom concepts that will now begin to shape their ideas and in one of those lecture sessions matthew chapter 6 he taught on what we have come to call in the body of christ as the lord's prayer hallelujah let's start from verse 10 but the verse of emphasis is verse 13 so jesus is teaching them how to pray in fact when you read luke's account the bible records that one time the disciples came and met him and they said teach us to pray in other words it was not a problem of prayerlessness it was a problem of prayer without results they had prayed john taught them to pray and they noticed there was something about the construction of jesus's spiritual understanding that made him to command results even in prayer are we together and he said teach us to pray so jesus now is mentoring the disciples on the details that should be captured not just in prayer but in the believers viewpoint as far as victory is concerned then verse 10 says thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven now we're not discussing the lord's prayer but just to let us know that in order of priority his emphasis is that your kingdom comes and that your kingdom comes anytime your will is being done wherever your will finds expression your kingdom comes there are we together and that he prayed that when you pray let his kingdom come in earth not on earth in earth the faith has been you because you are a vessel an earthen vessel so let the kingdom come the influence the government of the christ then he now says when you pray be aware that god is concerned about your supplies and do not be ashamed to beckon on heaven to give you your daily bread the supply that grants you strength then he says forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors now, now we come to a place of emphasis and lead us not into temptation lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil jesus is teaching the people how to pray he said when you talk to the father do not forget that there is evil and do not forget to ask the father to deliver you from evil that would be the title of my teaching deliver us from evil from the lips of the master himself jesus christ who is an embodiment of the father did not leave the saints in the dark as to the reality of evil he did not lead them in the dark as to the fact that they were not the only ones in the earth again and again he would teach them through parables that there were already creatures and inhabitants upon the earth that predated their coming and that they shouldn't walk in ignorance deliver us from evil this is jesus teaching the disciples how to pray knowing that he would go to the cross knowing that the substitutionary sacrifice of the father would be a done deal he still told them capture this in your prayer make sure you do not miss it as you pray let the subject of deliverance from evil be part of your prayer request are we together second timothy apostle paul is mentoring his son in the gospel timothy and in chapter 4 and verse 18 second timothy 4 and verse 18 please read together if you're a christian one to read and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom stop the lord shall deliver me from how many that means there are many and they come in different fashions but it says the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and after delivering me he now will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom hallelujah the bible very clearly lets us know that the subject of evil and the subject of darkness and the reality of the dark kingdom 
is something that the saints should not ignore are we together now yes the prophets did open us up to the mysteries of evil that surround this cosmos when jesus came in the flesh he did not hide the fact that there was evil in fact the birth of jesus was surrounded by catastrophe and chaos because jesus was born other died hallelujah there was a cry and there was a lamentation because the spirit of the antichrist knowing that the word had become flesh women lose their children because someone was born and there was a cry in rama like the prophets prophesied apostle paul began to teach on the reality of evil he was mentoring the church in ephesus now theologically speaking we know that the 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 discourse the book of ephesus is agreed to contain the highest church truth it was the zenith of paul's apostolic ministry it was under the leadership ephesus was a commercial center and it was a place that was under siege of a a a deity called diana it was a time of intense witchcraft so paul was not teaching people who were unlearned and he began to stratify the organogram of the dark kingdom he taught the believers how to stand in their victory how to sit in their position of authority but how to be able to fight and ward off the the arsenals of darkness he was the apostle that taught us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood he said but against principalities powers rulers of the dark kingdom he called them spiritual wickedness that reside in the heavenlies hallelujah now we have a generation that sadly in an attempt to show the victory of christ have downplayed the reality of the dark world and we have done it to the detriment of ourselves our success our destinies in christ our families we have ignored as a way of working on our minds to be positive we have ignored the reality of what is in our world in fact jesus was the one who taught men are not the only farmers in his parable he said while men slept another farmer came jesus told us that you are not the only farmer of your destiny and you are not the only one interested in that land called your destiny that while you are sowing someone is waiting for you too so you can see a harvest of seeds you can't remember sowing you know you went to bed in peace and now you get up with a situation you cannot remember planting that seed apostle john said the whole world lies in wickedness that means wherever you are located it doesn't matter wickedness has stretched its borders that far the condition to be a victim of this is not that you offend anybody the moment you pass through the womb of a woman you qualify for wickedness so you will have to sustain the forces in the spirit that help the saints to rise in light in spite of the arsenals of darkness this is why i ask you to come with your family members many of you will be surprised at the the plague of darkness that has sat upon families and you know in the realm of the spirit our concept of time here is not the way it is there so what you call long time in the realm of the spirit is not long time you are the only one who is tired the spirits are not tired that they sat down when your great-grandfather was there you would think you would be long enough time no no jesus himself is about to go to the other side to save 10 cities and the spirits that control that territory knowing salvation was coming they started walking through water and wind to cause a boisterous storm the disciples thought it was just weather and jesus was sleeping when he got up he did not say geography adjust yourself the bible says he rebuked the wind shalom the prince of peace is passing and he was speaking to exact spirits and they stopped when he got to the other side the first person he will meet is the embodiment of those spirits who told that spirit jesus was coming to the land he did not miss the mayor he did not miss the governor the spirits that control the territory were waiting at the water jesus what are you coming to do here we have caught this land they prosper commercially because of their fraternity with us now you are coming to disrupt status quo 
the bible says the man you call mad became a house for spirits that were there this was a man who was an evangelist who would save 10 cities the spirits carefully searched the family where that man would come from and made sure that they program an arsenal of attack the man was living in caves breaking chains and behaving like a madman yet had the destiny of a deliverer the commercial city fraternized with those spirits to prosper because the moment the spirits were dislodged the economy too went down are we blessed and jesus said hold your peace come out of him and the man went to bring ten cities deliver us from evil deliver us from evil The concept of deliverance is one that has created a lot of controversy in the body of Christ. There are people who the mere mention of the word deliverance creates agitation and disgust to them. Because according to the theology that they propose, that concept should not even be mentioned in the journey of the Christian faith. And I understand, you see, one of the things that God will help us learn is that I have said it yesterday there is almost no dimension of kingdom truth in the body of christ that does not have imbalances and exaggerations and these things do not happen necessarily just because the communicators are evil people or they intentionally desire to mislead them. no it is the bias that comes with the dealings of god in an area you see the way god deals with men is that if god is calling me into the healing ministry chances are that he will not capture within my training things like excellence and administration and so on and so forth the my emphasis will be the area that i will be dispensing to the body so that training will come with a bias by default if i align to the body of christ it should be corrected by my appreciating other ministries so god allowed that bias intentionally are we together now if i am teaching healing i will teach us the only thing the saints need in this life is healing it's not my fault you must understand the depth of the encounter that i had are we together yes a man for instance respectfully speaking like archbishop nicholas duncan williams a man who had even lost his fingers as a testament of the reality of evil he will hardly make a statement without communicating to you the reality of evil and there is no gospel you will preach to him to downplay that because there is an evidence that lives with him forever that evil is real are we together now yes so in dealing with this subject whether or not you believe the reality of this concept it is always wise to patiently follow the man of god as he teaches understand what the trend of what he's trying to communicate but many believers and sadly younger ministers are already getting into this trap they come into these biases and come up with a very disjointed theology that is incomplete the bible calls a class of spirits rulers of darkness that means their dominion starts there is ignorance in your life they search for the places of ignorance and that's where their reign comes rulers not of light of darkness this is a subject that i had to study myself because having respectfully looked at the body of christ and i have seen people who have communicated a dimension of deliverance that never seems to contain any possibility of victory for the saints and remaining under that system will do something to your sense of victory experientially and yet i have seen others who obviously are under siege the very fact that they do not accept that truth is an attack itself hallelujah years ago i remember i was counseling um, i don't talk too much about my experiences but a man of god walked in um for counseling and as soon as he walked in 
I saw these myriads of spirits just walking with him. Now I'm looking at this man and he doesn't even know what I'm seeing. And I said, wow, greeted him and he was sharing some problems he was having in his life and ministry. And I thought, what a joy. It will be my joy to help this man. And then I wanted to tell him politely in the most respectful way that, sir, I think there are many attacks around your life and you may need... Say, ah, he shot me immediately. He said, don't talk to me about those things. Just, I just came so that you agree with me. <sighs> now, I'm watching what this man is not saying. This is not some... Um, I know what is wrong with this man. And I'm seeing it and I want to respectfully, as a fellow minister, to say, sir, I love you with all my heart and I know what this problem is. And he said, no, you just agree with me. And I said, oh God, sometimes we really cause our problems. And then I told him, I said, that's alright, let's just pray. The last thing he remembered was I said, let's pray. And that's the end of it. Cut the long story short for the next one week. Without exaggeration. This man kept sending me text messages. And said, Apostle, what happened to me? What have I believed? My entire life. It didn't take two weeks. Doors started opening up like this in that man's life. Listen. This man was shocked. He was not the open doors. He said, so this is how I would have lived. My children would have lived like that too. My grandchildren would have lived like that. Let me speak to someone this morning. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God. If at all there is a seed sitting on your destiny, that if God be God, then you have come to your place of deliverance finally. Declare after me, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that my moment of visitation, my moment of deliverance, my moment of rising for my life, for my family, for my finances, for my destiny, age long captivities, hear the word of the Lord. It's time for you to lead me once and for all. Lift your voice and turn it into prayer in one minute. Please pray. It's time to arise for your light is come. Are you praying? Please take this session seriously. Think of your children while you pray. Think of your ministry while you pray. Hallelujah. 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 Please hear me. I hope you love prayer. Because we are going to do a lot of it this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. You are going to pray this morning. Please don't allow anything to distract you this morning. Leave big manism or leave whatever and focus on your destiny once and for all. And end this thing so that your victory listen victory is real in this spirit don't don't think because of long-standing issues you now feel like victory. no no victory is real you can walk in the experience of it one more prayer in the name of jesus every altar programmed over my destiny over my family by the blood of Jesus, blood. I come against you this morning. Lift your voice and pray. Blotting out every handwriting scripture says, and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. It will take us a week long to discuss this subject, but I'll just capture a few details that we may need, and then we'll pray. Please, um, if, if Pastor will allow, let me respectfully plead. How many of you came with your request? While I'm teaching, I would plead with the ushers, if you can, 
you can just just wave it round and you carry the the basket and just collect those requests let's collate them sir if it will not interrupt your protocol i would just want the request to be in front here that the god that answers by fire this morning that what you are holding on your hand this egyptian that you brought if god be god you are waving for the last time the last time please believe me if you've not written yours write it quickly those online you can send yours very quickly praise the lord please just pass it to the ushers don't lose focus let's let's teach obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 this is a very interesting scripture that is a classic on the reality of deliverance the bible says but upon mount zion look at the protocol it's amazing that deliverance does not happen outside zion those who are delivered are those who are even in mount zion upon mount zion there shall be deliverance number one after deliverance there shall be holiness then number three the house of jacob shall possess their possession so the end product is that you come into the reality of your inheritance but the bible says there is a spiritual protocol that leads to that there shall be deliverance not outside mount zion upon mount zion what is deliverance In Exodus chapter 6, 6, let's look at it quickly. Exodus chapter 6, from verse 6, I hope. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out. I will bring you out from under what? The burdens of the Egyptians. And I will read you out of their bondage. We are looking at the biblical definition of deliverance. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. And with great judgment. This is the Lord speaking. He's about to commission Moses to be a deliverer. And this is the context of his assignment. That I the Lord will use you to do this. Now deliverance in its purest form. The purest definition of, or generally speaking, is not just about casting demons and falling down and rolling. It's much more than that. Please listen. Deliverance is a system. You may want to write my definition. Deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of jesus christ i'll take time to dictate it that deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan over demons over the powers of darkness concerning our lives deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan, demons, and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives. That means that in, in its essence, scripturally speaking, deliverance is not so much about fighting. It is rather about establishing experientially the victory that has been wrought in Christ over Satan, over demons, over the entire arsenals of darkness concerning our lives and our destinies. This is very powerful. I wrote something here that deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. You have to get this concept that for the believer in Christ, the idea of deliverance is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. So these are some of the adjustments that I want us to have in our understanding. Hallelujah. 
Very quickly, let me teach that. There are three, only three biblical access points for Satan in the life of the saints. From Genesis to Revelation, every time you find that Satan has gained some kind of advantage over believers or over the inhabitants of earth, only three access points allow for that possibility. Number one, the first access point, and this has proven through history and scripture to be the strongest access point, are covenants. Number one, the first access point for Satan and demons in the life of believers, families, territories, destinies, are covenants. A covenant is a system of authorization. It's a system of authorization. Hallelujah. Based on mutual agreement, a system of authorization a legitimate system of authorization based on mutual agreement of two or more parties with benefits and consequences if and when violated a covenant is a system of authorization between two or more parties or based on the mutual agreement of two or more parties with benefits and then also with consequences if and when violated so this is the first access point and this has proven to be the strongest are we together now yes if i am a thief and i come to your house and i am stealing the moment i hear the sound of the police van or the owner of the house what do i do I run away because I am there illegally. Are we together? But if someone sells your land to me and I paid for it, if I see you coming, I will not run away because I am there on legal basis. You will not cast me out. There will be a system of reconciliation. This is why God did not cast out sin from man. As powerful as God is salvation, he didn't say sin. I use my authority. I cast you out of man. No. There was a spiritual protocol that needed to be fulfilled for man's sin to be saved. I mean for man to be saved from sin. Are we together now? You have to understand these dynamics. I'm rushing. Forgive me. Number two. The second access point for Satan in the life of the saints is ignorance. Ignorance. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Apostle Paul is teaching Ephesians 4 and verse 18. Having their understanding darkened, he says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Ephesians 4 18. That ignorance can alienate you from the experience of this Zoe life. That whilst it is true that this is a testimony that God has given us eternal life. And he says that this life is in his son. So that he that hath the son hath life. But that your ignorance will rob you of walking in the experience of this life. In fact, the assignment of the God of this world, according to Apostle Paul, is to blind the minds of those who are believers. Or those who are the inhabitants of the earth. So that the light of the glorious gospel will not be received by them. So covenants, ignorance. The third access point is disobedience. 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 It says having the readiness to judge disobedience. All disobedience when your obedience is complete. When your obedience is complete. Thank you sir. Thank you very much. Let's just allow this upon this altar here. Disobedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28, when you read from verse 1 to 12, it talks about the blessings that follow you when you obey. It says, It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. Then it says, You shall be exalted above all nations, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Then the first 12 verses, he begins to list all of them. And then he now tells you what comes upon you when you walk in disobedience. Covenants. Ignorance, disobedience. These are the three biblical access points for Satan and demons in the life of the saints. 
It's a very important information that we must have. Now, please write this quickly. According to scripture again, there are three levels of satanic influences on earth. I want to explain that very quickly. I've done a whole teaching on this series. It's called The Mystery of Deliverance, part one to four. You can access it online. It's free. And then just take your time and listen to understand this subject. Number one, the first level of satanic influence according to scripture is called deception. This is the first level. It's called deception. 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 Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 2 then we'll jump to 12 and 13. The Bible says, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. A system of deception. Go to verse 12. It says, But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Verse 12. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. There are people, listen, the level of deception will, can happen to you, whether you are a prayer warrior, whether you are a pastor, is a level that being born again does not exempt you from. Are we together? Yes. Paul calls it witchcraft. He said, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? He's speaking to Christians. Deception. In fact, Apostle Paul said, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, he says, and shall give heed to seducing spirits, he called it, and the doctrines of demons. These are not people who are bad. These are just people who are victims of the deceptions of Satan. The first level is deception. Deception. It is the assignment. One of the names of Satan is a deceiver. He is a master at it. He can deceive the entire world. I think it's Revelations 12 and verse 9. If I'm not mistaken, please give it to us. 12 and 9. Let's hurry up. Revelations 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived how many? The whole world. He was cast out into the earth and the angels were cast with him. Look how Satan is a master of deception. He was cast out from the earth and what we know is that he was just roaming around the, the horizons of this side of God's kingdom. But by the time Jesus comes to the earth, Satan had become the captain over the kings of the earth. A man who had no inheritance through history had deceived the kings. And now had control, even authority. And he told Jesus, bow to me. All the glories of this earth, they are mine. He's a master deceiver. Number two, the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control. Manipulation and control. This exists in the realm of the mind. Manipulation and control. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 23. Matthew 16 and 23. Look at this. Satan comes to Jesus. And when he could not gain access to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, the temptation, the next time he would come, he did not come to Jesus directly again. He used the compassion of a man called Peter. Satan does not only use negative attributes. He can use good things about you to destroy you and others. In this case, he used the compassion of Peter. To try to beckon on Jesus not to go to the cross. And Jesus discerning, he said, no, this is not just a compassionate Peter. He turned and said to him, Peter! He said, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter is wondering, me? And he said, I've seen more than you do not. I've seen more than you can see. He says, Thou art an offense unto me, for thou severest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Peter. 
He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when thou art converted, use this same formula, strengthen your brethren, because he will come for them. It's amazing that you can say Jesus is the Lord right now, and yet you do not know that your mind is under siege. Manipulation and control. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. I show you scriptures like this because when you are dealing with very sensitive subjects, it's important to allow the Bible speak for itself. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32. It says, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. The third level of satanic influence is called possession. Complete influence and control over an individual. Possession. As we have in Mark chapter 5, the story of the madman in Gadara. We may not have the time to read it, but you just write it down. Possession. Now, there has been an, an age-long controversy in the body of Christ whether Christians can be possessed or not and this has created a lot of controversy that is because many people believe that the only dimension of satanic influence is possession and once you are free from possession you are free i believe according to the authority of scripture and according to the the full import of what salvation carries that if one has been grafted to Christ and his one spirit, I do not believe that that individual can be possessed in terms of his spirit and his entire faculties. Because the Bible says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. So according to the authority of scripture, we can agree that, that sp the spirit of that man has been joined to Christ. But you are not a spirit alone. You have a mind and you have a body. Are we together now? So it is possible that you may never be possessed in as much as we believe possession to be. But that does not mean you are free from demons and the activities of demons. Manipulation and control, when extended, can look equal to possession. Because when they hijack your mind completely, it can bring you down as though you never gave your life to Christ. Are we together now? This is very important. So many believers do not concentrate on this. They say, I'm born again. I've given my life to Jesus Christ. And yet you watch that there are different levels of demonic manipulations in their lives. And then they refuse and say, no way, Satan cannot access my spirit. You are right. Even the body of Moses, Satan wanted it. When Paul was praying that you be preserved, he said that you are preserved spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Why did Satan want the body of Moses? So he could enter it. And if he arises as Moses, everybody who believed in Moses will believe in that voice. Because the way the devil does is he fights you. When he cannot get you, he will try to fraternize with you. So the day you are not there, they can listen to him. This is what happened in the book of Acts. Oh, these are great men that have come to preach the truth. So that the day Paul finishes his crusade and goes, you say, I saw you with Paul. This is already a lesson for us ministers. We must be careful. Your, the, you, you rob up your integrity on associations. And love everybody, but there is no command in scripture that association is compulsory. You have the right to choose. There is no such thing as once a friend, always a friend. No. You are a friend to the degree to which your values are consistent with the patterns of the kingdom. And if you change, you must be honored for making your decision. But you cannot carry a bag log of rubbish to destiny. I hope you still like me. This already, I just thought to press this in once and for all. There's this pressure all around and people continue. I, I say it respectfully. We are not, this is not a call to condemnation. But that you must trust God for grace to purify the sacrifice of your work with God. For the sake of those you are ministering to. Please sit down, sirs. Are we together? So we have deception. We have manipulation and control. We have possession. Write this down, please. The greatest strength of Satan, one factor that will make him very look powerful over the lives of believers, is called the flesh. 
the flesh not sin the flesh the sin problem was dealt with by the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ on the cross but when it has to do with the flesh the flesh is a system that you die daily to it you don't cast away the flesh what is the flesh write this down the outworking of the sin nature manifested in ideologies lifestyle and motifs is called the flesh the outworkings of the sin nature manifested in ideologies manifested in lifestyle and manifested in motifs the state of the heart this is the greatest strength of satan over the life of the believer it is not necessarily sin because the moment you declare the lordship of jesus christ and even if you come to him in repentance and brokenness according to the authority of scripture the bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us it says but if we confess our sins that god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so the sin problem had been dealt with in christ but the flesh a way of thinking a way of living and the state of your heart this can authorize darkness indefinitely over the life of a believer hallelujah the flesh is a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of god now this is very very important i have to jump let's deal with the three levels of deliverance this is where i was really coming to this is this is all those are just support information to guide us so that we can deal with this the three levels of deliverance what i call complete deliverance this is important for us respectfully speaking as men and women of god to note that in administering what we call deliverance to the saints it is not just something we just pray and cast out spirits there are rules of engagement and not knowing this is the reason why you find out that many people supposedly are free for a while and then they return back jesus taught extensively on the activities of demons and in one of his discourse this is what he said that when a spirit leaves a man so we know that spirits can leave men the bible says that that spirit will go through dry regions is that true seeking for a place of refuge and not finding any the spirit will tell itself that i will go back to my house the man is free but the devil still calls that place my house and the bible says that when it comes it will find that man who he calls his house swept clean but empty then it will go and gather several other spirits higher than itself in ranking and come and camp and build a stronghold around that man so that the end of that man is worse than the way he was this is as discussed by jesus himself now before we talk about the three levels of deliverance listen to me i hope you know that africa as a continent by the grace of god we trust that our children and if christ tarries our children's children will have the opportunity to walk upon this territory free of the orchestrations of darkness because there will be a generation that will be determined to pay that price and detach them from it but culturally speaking the tragedy of africa is that many of our fathers before the missionaries brought the gospel in as much as we know it all that they knew was traditional worship are we together now they were sincere people but these demons came to propose ideas to fraternize with them for safety to fraternize with them for fertility to fraternize with them for um increase prosperity so they entered myriads of covenants on behalf of their children and their children's children even to the fourth generation protect us from war from our neighboring enemies and in response we will serve you while that agreement was happening you were not there just like when jesus was dying you were not there are we together now and so these spirits kept their own part I, I once traveled to a place in this nation where they showed me a rock and they said there was a history around that rock that in times of war the rock would open up physically and people would enter into it to hide 
some of the few old people who were alive said they entered it but the condition is that the rock will eat the first person and the last person so the, you are a sacrifice whoever you are first to enter and then if you are lazy and you are the last to enter you know that you are gone now, now watch this listen carefully there are other people who made covenants with waters protect our people from war there is a place in this nation that when enemies come to fight the city disappears literally the people will stand and just see a plain land and yet there is a city there because the spirits entered a covenant with these people now i don't mean to create any theological controversy but when you study other extra biblical texts not necessarily erroneous texts texts that did not make it they were not canonized to be part of scripture are we together now but they are also made reference in scripture you will see that it was some of these spirits that came and taught the inhabitants of the earth certain concepts on how to conjure spirits through fire they use the elements of nature and the supernatural the devil came and taught people these things and he will receive allegiance as a result hallelujah yes so we came from families when the missionaries came from the west to come and preach they they only knew the gospel of salvation most of them listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the fundamental gospel but i tell you by the authority of scripture it is not the only gospel jesus christ himself revealed to us the word gospel there means proclamation good news and there is a body of truth that jesus brought that he called the gospel the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love to mankind demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the christ the object of that love is man and creation are we together now and under the gospel of salvation man does not do anything his assignment is to believe that report and to one when he believes it as true his reward for believing is the way the life of god what the bible calls eternal life but that's not the only gospel there is a gospel the bible calls the gospel of the kingdom in the gospel of the kingdom jesus is not savior he is king man is not just a receiver man is a witness so these are dynamics the missionaries did not know this they sincerely came with the gospel of salvation because they were largely missionaries and when they came and met our fathers they destroyed shrines and died the next day they said they died with of malaria but we know now with spiritual intelligence that it was not malaria that killed them are we together now yes. so the average person who comes from this territory already has a backlog of spiritual things to deal with now it's an uncomfortable truth but i pray that god will give us grace to understand this and you see according to scripture the dynamics of the operation of darkness is that it is territorial in nature and they preserve their doings around territories by the ministry of spirits that we call familiar spirits that these spirits are the spirits that grow with the inhabitants of territories when you read the bible when jesus christ was casting out the demons from the madman in gadara they pleaded that he does not relocate them to another territory because they had been in that territory for a long time they agree with the people they have mastered the culture and the activities of people they are responsible for creating mind control patterns so you find out that there is a region where it is the women that feed the men have you seen that kind of thing some of you is happening in your own families no matter how hard working the person is he will spend 10 years in the u.s and return back there are families where the elder ones serve the younger ones there are families where all the men do not live long they have a lifespan these are patterns i'm showing you not to scare you we are believers and there is victory in christ but i'm just opening you up to this reality there are spirits that clamp down poverty you would see professors within a territory there are territories where the oldest person living does not cross 50. the territory is full of young people who cannot mentor younger ones because there is a spirit that cuts the heritage of good things there are families that are made of old people every time the old man wants to die he comes back alive and a young man dies for it you read your bible you will see that kings leave their children to maintain their own life
Are we together? There are families where marriages never work. The moment the woman gets married, the lifespan of peace is two years. She must return back to her father's house. So you see fathers, even in their old age, taking care of the entire children. There are families where if you rise, it's like a spiritual meter watching you. If you hit a threshold of achievement, you must go down, no matter what happens. This, as I'm saying it, many of you are looking at your lives, you are seeing it. That you go to bed and you are finding yourself in an old house, an old secondary school. You are writing an exam that never finishes. Don't say it does not matter. I'm giving you meaning to your experiences. The moment they say you are writing a promotion exam, there you go to bed in the night. Someone comes either to sleep with you or do something, and then the next person who vowed to help you looks at you, and it's as if a spell is cast on them. There are ladies, if a man says he loves you, it's a spirit that will appear and warn him, and say, you, if you don't leave this lady, he won't tell you what he saw. He will just back up quietly and peacefully. Now, listen. Now, this is where the prophetic ministry has made a bit of a mistake. Because, you see, if I am a man of God, for instance, and I am a prophet, and I am about to help a man and a woman, if God opens my eyes, and I see, I may not know that there is an altar in this woman's life that is responsible for the backwardness of the man. So, I will just interpret based on what I have seen. And I will say, this woman is a witch. She may not be a witch. But the truth is she's connected to something, a, a foundation that is having an obvious implication on her husband. Ah, your life will change today. Oh. There are families that have raised presidents in this nation, have raised politicians in this nation, and yet they may not have a house of their own. Have you seen people like that? They will tell you, by God's grace, I raised this one. I advised this senator. I helped him. In fact, it was me that told him to run for senate. There are people, the evil covering on you makes sure that every good person forgets you. You labor over people for a long time when it's time to help you. And some of us are men of God. Sincerely so. You fast and pray with people with all your heart. Hallelujah. I know families where men do not leave. The wife of the sons of the prophet. All the men in her life were about to leave. The widow at Nain. Her husband died. Her only child died. And Jesus said, no, this is a pattern. This is not just the issue of resurrection. Hallelujah. You get a job and you rejoice. Everybody celebrate with me. You are dancing. The Lord has done me well. And from that day that you announce it, you go down immediately. This is why many of our parents today and grandparents don't love God again. When you ask them, they'll say, Look, we are the ones who brought Renard Bonke to Nigeria. We brought T.L. Osborne. Those days we loved God. God has failed me. We gave our all and God failed us. Leave me to go back to my traditional worship. Let me tell you what Satan is looking for. Satan is not looking for your money. He does not need it. Satan is not looking for your marriage. What Satan wants is transgenerational allegiance. Transgenerational allegiance. Bow down to me. Let your children bow down to me. But there's someone in this place. You won't bow in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Satan is not interested in membership. No. Satan is not interested in health. No. Have you seen people that is the same pattern of sickness that kills everybody? Twenty years. And all of a sudden, a particular pattern of sickness. The younger one, twenty years. Have you seen your loved ones sharing the dream that you two you had when you were their age? They will say, Mama, I don't know why, but... Someone came to me in the night, an old woman, and your mother starts looking at you in a strange way. Say, how did she dress? And she describes it. I say, oh, next week is your birthday. Have you seen people that have two, two year or three, three year cycles? Something tragic, tragic must happen, whether death or loss. 
every two two years these are patterns that are caused by familiar spirit but in the name of jesus the son of the living god today those patterns die completely in your life listen i come from a family where the men never rise sustainably so i know what i'm saying i'm not preaching nonsense it says the things that we have seen the things that we have heard even that which our hands have handled of the word of life i know people who have spent decades in the u.s decades in uk and when it is time these spirits call them back they return back like thieves and they come and sit back in the village and die deliver us from evil hallelujah there are territories where no matter how nice the man is and the wife to the children the children must become rebellious must become rebellious they will pray for them they will love them the moment those children become teenagers here these altars are activated and the child begins to be a, a rebel and the man will cry as a man of god and cry and say why is my life like this I do not teach these things to magnify Satan in any way. I only teach these things to open you to realities. We have trained ourselves in the body of Christ to tell lies. And people just hide these things and pretend that they are not there. Whereas you know it is eating you up. There are some of you you cannot... You know, I, many of you have listened to my messages. Demons used to oppress me oh, as a man of God, not as a believer. That I would preach and yet... And because of the prophetic inclination, I will see them enter my room. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob. Listen, some of you here sincerely, you are looking at me. Some of you are business people, some of you are great people. You are not lazy. You've been laboring for decades. But there are spirits that sit upon the wealth of families. Zechariah 1 18. What seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. That these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man doth lift up his head. No matter how hard you walk, it is from hand to mouth. You buy a new car and as soon as you go out to show it to your pastor, on the way your car will hit Mopol. You think it was just an accident. Have you seen people who build houses just when they are about to celebrate by the next day the whole house will crash. They say one wind just came and pushed the house or those who build a house to celebrate it the next day they will die there are families that never eat the fruit of their labor just when good things are about to happen something must happen someone shout god forbid hallelujah why am i telling you this because i'm about to show you the forces of deliverance there are some of you the call of god upon your life if these altars are displaced you will be surprised it's the reason why nobody hears your voice the day you are about to do something all your destiny helpers are absent everybody who can lift you always comes late can anything good come out of nazareth Nathaniel was attesting to the fact that territories can carry spirits and altars and controlling powers that keep them keep people down. Jesus never looked and said, Nathaniel, you are lying. He said, No, leave him. He's sincere. He's an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. In other words, he's not lying. Hallelujah. 
There are families that you move forward, but your pace is too slow. The first person builds a house at 70 years. The earliest person to finish school finishes at 45. And if anybody attempts to demonstrate speed in that family, these altars cut them off immediately. Please sit down. Three levels of deliverance so that we can start praying. Mm. Number one, the first level of deliverance from scripture. Casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. That is the first level of deliverance. Casting out the spirit influences in your life and behind your challenges. Spirits do not just oppress people. Spirits can live in circumstances. That means your problem can have a spirit behind it. That's what I mean. Spirits don't just oppress lives alone. They can enter situations and empower them. A spirit can enter a court case issue. And something that should be a simple issue can last for decades till it makes you poor. That one you know is not an ordinary court case again. A spirit can fraternize with headache. Something that you can just take Panadol and let it go. And that thing will remain for 14 years. Hospital will not diagnose it. Every time you see things that the physical laws cannot solve, there is a spirit that is making it alive. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Apostle James was teaching us on faith and works. And he borrowed a phenomenon of the spirit and the body to explain it to us. He says, for as the body without a spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So every body needs a spirit to be alive. By body, I don't just mean human body. Problems are bodies. There is a spirit that empowers them. Are we together? Casting out the spirit's influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. Spirits can attach themselves to your spirit, soul, and body through covenants, ignorance, and disobedience. We have seen it. So, casting out these spirits is biblical. It's not demonic. It's not satanic to cast out devils. The Bible gives it as a mandate to believers. When Jesus announced his messianic prophecy, he took out time to cast out demons, to heal and to do all of these things, when he commissioned the apostles, he said, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, freely you have received, freely give. When given the great commission, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. So there are spirits behind the situations of people. You don't solve those problems by counseling. Are we together now? Yes. It was Paul that began to express his frustration even as an apostle. In Romans chapter 7, he said that I see a war in my members, he said, so that the things that I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. And the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. He says, for with my spirit I serve the Lord, but in my body, that is my flesh, I see another war walking within my members. He was so frustrated, he said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk after, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It says, For the law of the spirit of life hath set me free from the law of sin and death. So there are interplay of laws, empowered by altars. There are people who steal just because they are lazy and foolish. But there are people who steal because there are spirits behind it. If you like hide your money inside your shoe, it's like word of knowledge. Those demons would push them. They would just look and open the... It's not normal. Have you seen people like that? Break the wall and keep your money. They will pass and stand in front of that wall and look at it. They don't know what is driving them. It's a spirit. You don't solve it out by flogging and by counseling. Hallelujah. 
So casting out the spirit influences. Now, this is a part of deliverance that is prevalent in the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. We believe in casting out of demons. And once it is done within the allowance of scripture, that is fine. But this is not the only dimension. Please listen to me. This is the reason why many people's deliverance is not complete. They continue to do it again and again and again and again because casting out demons is not the only requirement for complete deliverance. Number two, the second level of deliverance is called deliverance through transformation. Deliverance through transformation. And that's by the word of God. Deliverance through transformation. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, he said, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, and he calls it your reasonable act of worship. Then when we get to verse 2, he says, be not conformed to this world. The word world is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with this cosmos. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So the Bible says to be transformed. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. It says to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a belief construction that was in Christ Jesus that made him to manifest as the Son of God. He said, let that mind also be in you. This is where I would respectfully observe that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry largely are not getting it quite well. We do well in casting out demons, but the ministry of the word, the preaching of deliverance through the transforming power of the word is not there. When you cast out these demons, watch this, the spirits go away, but that door is still open. Deliverance through transformation is like closing the door through knowledge. Are we together? The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When you do not understand the principles of the kingdom, it will make even your deliverance look like it is not profitable. And can I tell you this? Over the years, demon spirits have studied the church and have studied men of God. They have known that many of us have not understood this dimension of deliverance. So when you cast those demons, they go out happy because they, they will be waiting for the person at, at the junction there. They know that that door is still open. So before you say anything, they go happily. They know that next week the man is back with them. Deliverance through transformation. What does this mean? A reorientation of your spiritual understanding. Through the word, opening you up to the nature and the character of God. You close the door of the flesh through ignorance. You tear down strongholds, thought patterns. That is a dimension of deliverance. That's why it's important that the saints be taught the word of God. When these spirits are casted out of you, you should not just be left like that. You are now mentored and taught the word of God. Do you know how Jesus trained the disciples? He spent three and a half years teaching them, doing something to their minds. Afterwards, he said, you are ready. In fact, he did not even finish his curriculum with them. When he resurrected, he had no time to celebrate his victory. He said, guys, get back to class. We have 50 more days. 40 days I'm with you and then I ascend to heaven. And he was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. The teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance. Write it down. The teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance. More than casting out the spirit influences, we must expose the body of Christ to the mysteries of the kingdom, to the patterns of the kingdom. Their mindsets must be transformed because mindsets are doorways, they are gateways that authorize both the Holy Spirit and demon spirits into the life of a believer. Hallelujah. Deliverance through transformation. Let me give you an example. Please, can I have two gentlemen here? Just two well-dressed gentlemen. Come up here, please. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Now, watch this. Let's assume these are two gentlemen here. 
Are we together? God forbid, but let's assume that there is a spirit and a pattern in the life of this man and his family. Are we together now? And he comes toward a life. And Reverend Godwin, while ministering under the unction of the spirit, will cast out the spirit from this man. Now we agree from the authority of God's word that this man, the spirit, has left. Are we together now? Maybe he comes and his issue is, there are no jobs, I'm not getting a job, I'm not, nobody wants to help me. Every destiny helper just goes away from me, okay? Now the spirit influence is casted out of him, but it still does not guarantee he will get a job. It still does not guarantee that he will have good people, because there are laws in the kingdom that control some of these results. For instance, the law of honor. I've taught you the law of honor. Many times you've listened to these messages and you've heard me mentor the body of Christ on the law of honor. Are we together now? Yes. So, this man, this is the guy that God has destined to bless him. Watch this. This is the man who is going to give him a job or a contract or a lifting. This man has been delivered of that spirit, but he is bankrupt of spiritual knowledge. He will pass this man pass him every day and yet his breakthrough will not come because although the spirit is not there he has not been transformed to know that there is honor he won't greet he is rude he is arrogant there is no demon but he will still not rise because he has not been cultured on the systems and the methods of the kingdom now i teach this man on diligence and the power of character are you seeing now this is another level of deliverance. The next time he meets his destiny helper, what happens? Good afternoon, sir. Just this act. And the man says, Ah, young man, I've been seeing you every day. You look very smart. Um, what is wrong? And he says, I've been trusting God for a job. He said, You mean it? And you know, if jo I'm just about to give somebody a job somewhere. A miracle just happened. Now, it is not the spirit. It is now the knowledge, the teaching of the word that has brought character in this young man. There are many, many young Nigerians in need. Demons have been casted out of them. But because the methodologies of the kingdom have not been taught them, they are still not delivered. It's called deliverance through transformation. So when you cast out the spirit influence, it's just one of the steps. Now what largely the apostolic and the prophetic ministry does, is that they will cast out demons from this man. And after he's free, after two months, he comes back and says, Man of God, I, I don't feel that thing I used to feel again, but my life has still not changed. Are you seeing that now? There is a plethora of bad behavior, ignorance in the life of this man. The teaching ministry is the key to sustaining deliverance. Are we together? Yes. So you see these guys now, and this man comes, for instance, he wants to increase now the demon of poverty that sits on his family has been casted out but he still remains poor and then he comes to sit on during a financial series here and here's your pastor teaching that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty that the diligent hand shall be made fat out together that the lazy man because of the weather will not sow and he will beg in harvest now the teaching is is recalibrating his mind there is a construction of spiritual understanding according to colossians chapter 1 verse 9 please give it to us colossians 1 verse 9 paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, and he was showing them the boundaries of spiritual growth that i know i will not seek to pray for you and to desire that he might be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom number three spiritual understanding are we together so this man is taught he came from a family of idol worship came from a family of negative demonic priesthood and sits under this unction and fire lands from heaven gets that spirit out but the man is still not free and then after one year of proper mentorship, the teaching ministry, exposing him to the dimensions of the kingdom. Now the man is strong. He knows what prayer does. He knows what diligence does. He knows what honor does. He knows what character does. Are we together now? He knows what speaking the word does. This man is fortified in a way that those demons will not come again. Could this be where some of us are now? 
no matter who lays hands on you and no matter what demons are casted out when the madman in gathering was delivered of those spirits the bible says they came and they met him sitting down in the lecture hall of jesus in his right mind his life the demons had left his life the next assignment was his mind your mind needs to change if your mind does not change your life cannot change it's true many believers do not immerse themselves in the kind and the quality of spiritual knowledge that fortifies them and so it is that ignorance that makes satan to look so powerful that he can veto whatever it is and bless no, and, and oppress you no sir satan does not have that kind of power even jesus knocks at the door of your heart and patiently waits for you to open if the son of god knocks your heart why shouldn't spirits knock i tell you they are not but they have taught you a way of opening it without knowing there is no spirit authorized to veto through the will of men it is not given to them at the expense of your eternal salvation the savior knocks and waits for you to use your will to open listen what you know about god and what you know about satan matters let me tell you a secret do you know if this man has a dream now watch this if this man has a dream and in that dream he sees someone shooting him or an arrow fired into his body are you together or something demonic he can get up and say ah so this is how my life is he does not know that that very act is an act of permission in the spirit are you getting what i'm saying see satan is a master of the flesh realm and according to the law of birthing and the law of reproduction it will take the seed from the man meeting with the woman to have a child are we together watch this the dreams that satan projects to you they are like seeds from a man they need a fertilization the same way a man can plant a seed and a woman's womb can reject the seed you can also reject those projections please listen there is nothing in the realm of the spirit that is absolute it depends on men for it to happen no matter how real you see that dream no matter how real you see satan knows that you may not have that knowledge so you get up saying this thing was real i'm even sweating it's over that is over it's like the woman receiving seed yes sir. so when you get up and have those dreams and then you are fortified by this understanding barrenness is a reality in our lives you can make your relationship with satan look like barrenness that no matter how many seeds the bible says that there are three things that never say enough one of it is the barren womb so no matter how many times satan sends those seeds through dreams through visions through circumstances around you you are motivated by the reality of scripture that while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen the bible says they are temporal but the things that are unseen not unreal unseen are eternal now you can you know what to do with the dream you had this morning ah! i had a vision about you and i saw a ghastly motor accident i don't doubt your vision but that is a seed looking for fertilization you can receive it through fear you can receive it through doubt or you can stand based on the word of god which is another seed incorruptible and superimpose these lies the bible says let god be true see a lie is not what is wrong or false a lie is whatever god did not say understand this a lie is not an incorrect information a lie is whatever did not proceed from the lips of the master so even if it is correct and god did not say it it is a lie mm. so when you look at your situation now and god did not say it what do you call it 
So adjust your idea of lies. Our world interprets lies as what is wrong relative to a standard of the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. The truth, I am life. Deliverance to transformation. Let me give us the last one. And then we allow the fire of the Spirit to fall upon our destinies in this place. Hmm. The third level of deliverance that makes it complete is called the discipline of conformity. Romans chapter 8 from verse 13. The discipline of conformity. There is a dimension of deliverance that does not depend on God alone. No. Man has an active participatory role to play. The discipline of conformity. Romans chapter 8, please. And verse 13. Are you there? Romans 8, 13. Please read. One to read. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, who does the mortifying? God only supplies the grace. But the active is called the discipline of conformity. There are many believers that leave everything up to God and just believe that things will happen just by itself. No. There is the discipline of conformity. Look up, please. Ask any man who prays. They will be lying to tell you prayer is convenient every time. There are times you have to wake yourself in tongues. And say in the name of Jesus, leg, obey me. God gave me authority over you. You are going to stand up and pray. There is no man who studies the Bible and just keeps smiling all the time. It takes discipline to do certain things in this kingdom. The discipline of conformity. No matter how anointed you are, if it's not an oppression over your life and you stand on this road, you will die now. That means you can choose to leave the earth in the next five minutes. And God will respect your will. You stand on this road, the devil will program someone who is thinking like you too. And two of you will kill yourselves immediately. That means it is within your power to walk with the provisions of grace afforded you. To ensure that you walk within the boundaries, the provisions that are meant for the believers to make for victory. It's God helping us. If we are together, say Amen. amen. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. Galatians 6 and verse 8. For he that soweth, now he's talking about famine. Look up, please. He that soweth to his flesh. So the flesh is a soil, and the spirit. Is a soil. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let me tell you what that means. That as a Christian, where you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, that laxity is an invitation that demons come back again to my destiny. No matter what kind of covering you are in, if you allow this carelessness, that you do not do anything about your life. Oh, pray for me as you are going to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Pastor just wrote a book. A series was just finished. Buy the truth and sell it not. Uh -uh. You can buy clothes. You can buy designers. Respectfully speaking, I don't mean to be sarcastic. And you don't invest. You are sowing to the flesh. The Bible assures you that you will, of a truth, you will reap corruption. It is not all up to a pastor or a man of God to deliver you. There is a role that you have. You cannot watch all kinds of things on TV, on social media, and pollute your mind from morning till night and expect that the fire remains and expect that demons go away. Do you know that there is an information you listen to for five minutes? It will take you almost six months to get it out of your mind. Are we together? Now, 
We are a social media generation and I bless God for the privilege of the social media. Thank God for the, the good use of it. But in many instances, it has destroyed people. There are people every two, two minutes, even when they are driving, they are doing something. It's terrible. You must have the discipline to conquer that addiction if you want to go far in life. Your phone cannot have authority over you. Don't let this become a demon. Don't let a demon enter your phone. Phone, thank you. But that you were created to be an advantage to my life. I should not be a slave to you. You don't know where your Bible is for two weeks. But if your phone gets missing for five minutes, if your recharge card becomes 200 naira, it, it looks like you are sick. You move around till you borrow money and put in recharge card. Where the book fell, I can't remember. I don't know where I kept the CD. Just when he was about to say something that will liberate me. Sincerely, I pray for my generation that God will give us an appetite for spiritual things genuinely. That we will not see God as a necessary luggage we are carrying in our voyage through destiny. And you know, right now, when you talk about being spiritual and being serious, it is not trendy. It looks like you are, you are a nuisance to civilization. But the time will come when everyone will reap the harvest of the seed he has sown. The Bible says, let God be true and all men liars. I do not know one man who has been a genuine, passionate lover of God. Sincere, not that you are using God to get things. A lover of God, committed to the truth of Scripture, walking in truth, and you remain down. No, sir. No, sir. Are we ready to pray? Casting out the spirit influences, deliverance through transformation, the discipline of conformity. It is this aspect of discipline that will require some of you sustaining the courage to edit relationships there are many many people who love god sincerely so but there are very destructive associations apostle i don't drink but all my friends drink but they know that i'm, I'm the preacher god kept me there to win them listen let me tell you don't fool yourself that's not how god changes people god takes moses out of egypt first and works on him before sending him back to egypt the training does not happen while you are in Egypt. Are we together? Yes. There are times that because God is insisting on lifting people, He can relocate you literally from your family for many years. Because even though He loves your family members, they do not hold a position that can allow the presence of God to build you. So He would disguise it either through a job, as a student, you will disguise it by sending you to a university far, NYST far, a job somewhere. That system of quarantine is very important. That it takes you out of that environment that sponsors evil around your life. And keeps you in a place where you flog it out with destiny. And when you are made, he sends you back. Listen to me. Some of us, our parents, had the opportunity to hear preachers say what I'm saying. And they were sitting on chairs just like you are listening. And they laughed at the preacher. Look at your pain today is a result of their laughter and their carelessness. Now God is giving you an opportunity in this conference today. You can choose to say, I may have suffered what my parents did not do anything about. But I love my children too much. To allow them to ask me a question tomorrow that I cannot answer. And say, Daddy, where were you? I had an old tape and I had you were in that service. Why did you not say Amen when they were praying? Why did you not open your heart to submit your prayer request? It's called a comeback. God is about to lift families. Please rise up on your feet. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Thank you guys. God bless you. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Sing it with all your heart. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. 
My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Listen. The riches of the kingdom are for those who are part of the kingdom. So before we get into this five or ten minutes of destiny changing prayer and ministration, you are here listening, following online from whatever nation of the world, or you are in here and you know sincerely in the name of honesty that you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus with all my heart, but for some reason my life has just gone haywire and I don't want to deceive myself. Wherever you are, in the next one minute, I'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here quickly. I want to lead you to Jesus. Win that war of destiny right now. Think of your children while you make this decision. If there's anybody like that, quickly, please. Don't wait for the first person. Be the first. Win that war and come and stand here. Let's celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. What a life. Is this the best you can do? Don't sit back there and say one day go better. When the Titanic sank, there were only two lists. Those who were lost and those who were saved. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Please look at me. I want to salute all of you young and old alike for making this bold decision. When we come to receive the life of God, it's not like a funeral service. This is, this is, keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Listen. It is selfish to sit back and not make it right when you know your children will suffer your children's children will suffer it's an opportunity that god is giving the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he says that he will convict the world of three things of righteousness of sin and of judgment lift your right hand all of you who are here high to the heavens i like you to pray after me you're not reciting a poem do this passionately from the depth of your heart say lord jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and I believe that you are the Son of God tonight I receive Jesus as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin of Satan and of the flesh is broken from off my life from today i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life keep your hands lifted father we present to you the ones jesus died for and in the name of jesus we declare that the power of sin the grave the flesh hell is broken over their lives forever we commend you to the ministry of the word and of the spirit and we declare that you become built you become established the power of satan is broken from off your life forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen okay now this is what you will do please all of you in concert as we clap for you you just get into that room there will be officials that will follow you just for a few minutes and you'll come back and join us as we pray let's celebrate them quickly as they do so god bless you god bless you God bless you. Please appreciate them. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? That this will become a moment of destiny. That many of you writing the history of your life can say, I remember it was at Water Life Center, December 2020, 
that that siege was broken. Please, when it's time to pray, I'd like you to pray. I know that we've spent a little time, but please just walk with me. God wants to visit our destinies. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And run some captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And run some captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Has come to you, his Israel. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, he Madonna. Hello, he Madonna. Shela Barada Zia Dada Bada. I see the angels of the Lord in this place. Please take it high. Just give me volume. At the count of three, you are going to shout the name Jesus. Listen to me. The Bible says, Wherefore, Kali Salanda Bariata, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. He said that at the mention of that name, that everything in the earth, in heaven and under the earth, will bow and declare that Jesus is Lord. As you shout that name, every altar, every ordinance, we are coming with the rod of a higher priesthood. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. There will be a massive deliverance. The fire of God will sweep from all over this auditorium, right on the internet, and bring deliverance to people. Father, I declare, by the spirit of grace and prophecy, here at World Alive Convention, Lord, the destinies that have been tied down, the families that have been tied down, as you shout Jesus at the count of three, let there be deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. I command altars, be broken now. Bring them out. Father, upon altars, and Jakarta shake the battle. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. I command yokes of darkness be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. Please bring them out. We are praying. I'm seeing, I'm seeing fire coming on ladies. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I use you as a point of contact. Every daughter of Zion here that has been oppressed by spirits in dreams at the count of three shout Jesus one, two, three that fire upon your destiny that fire shake it, shake it, shake it 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 ancestral altars 
Locks of darkness, it's one spirit. Lift up your heads, all these gates be lifted up and sent on. Now listen to me, listen to me, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing families that delay has sat upon them. The only thing growing is your age, nothing else is increasing. At the count of three, fire is falling on those families. Father, I pray that any family here that has been eaten over by the seed of delay, I declare right now, in the name of Jesus, as you shout again, the healer, that shout of praise, in the name of Jesus, may that fire rest upon you. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cross the lady, I cross the lady, I cross the lady, the spirits of the lady, lead these families, in the name of Jesus. Thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter of my head. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing people's feet bound with chain. I'm seeing the number 11. 11 people in this place. It's like there is a chain holding your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are, but I declare by the Spirit of grace, some of you are off the balcony. Father, these 11 people, right now as I pray, in the name of Jesus, and at the count of three, may the hand of God reach you. One, two, three, be free now. Be free now. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Hallelujah. Now everyone say this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come by the blood and I declare that on account of the sacrifice of Jesus, every legal access that the devil has over my life, my family, my destiny, my finances, let the blood speak. Lift your hands and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak against ordinances. Let the blood speak. Every legal access. What a life are you praying? Online are you praying? Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. Say in the name of Jesus. My head. You are the symbol of my glory. Everything that has brought you down. Release me now. I rise. And I shine. Lift your voice and pray. Release my glory by the power in the name of Jesus. I rise. I shine. I rise. I shine. I rise. I shine. Prepare the touch. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Every prison door. And every prison gate. Stopping my advancement. Stopping my influence. I declare. Be broken. Lift your voice and pray. Every prison door, he has broken the gates of bars and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Jesus, every human agent in partnership with altars, in partnership with spirits against my destiny, the Lord rebuke you. I declare judgment now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Are you tired? Say in the name of Jesus. My finances. Hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare my portion in this land, in this nation within my territory come to me lift your voice and pray my portion god is a god of portions my portion through wisdom come to me through value come to me through relationships come to me through favor come to me through innovation come to me Hallelujah. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. Listen to me. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Then the Bible tells us the beginning of the story. That the mother cursed him because she bore him in sorrow. But Jabez came to a point where he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Is someone ready to pray? Say, Father. This level of my life, I am grateful for it, but shift me to a higher level. Shift me in ministry, shift me financially, shift me spiritually. Lift your voice and pray. Higher level, higher dimension, higher dimension. Grateful for this level, but take me higher. Grateful for this level, but lift me higher. For the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your majesty. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer, and then we'll deal with the request here. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, I have power by the Spirit. I have power, and it is by the Spirit. Psalm 66 verse 3 says, Say unto God, How terrible art thou in your ways. It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your speaking. Is someone ready to pray? One last prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the anointing, the unction, the grace to rise from this pit and to remain in victory. Let it come upon me from heaven. Lift your voice and pray. The unction for the next level. The grace from the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 I want to truly honor your pastor and your father for allowing this. I have a covenant with God of answered prayers. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. I do. Listen to me. Let me pray for those in front here. All of you that have come to the front, every spirit that holds your life, you know my voice. I send it as an instruction in the realm of the spirit. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, out of them now. Go, 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 go. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. Everything you have stolen, in the name of Jesus, be gone forever. In the name of Jesus, we cause you altars of darkness. Be gone forever in the name of Jesus. We feel the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain, let it rain. Will you open? Hallelujah. The Bible says, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Please listen. I'm standing in faith and I'm standing in partnership with the grace upon your father. If you are yet to drop yours, please just bring it here. This is a representation of your pain. This is a representation of your sleepless night. This is a representation of that which you do not want to see. Exodus 14:14. 14, 14. Please give it to us. Shalada sali shalahas kabrandagaduziata. The Lord Himself, the Bible says, shall fight for you. And all that will remain with you is your peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Please stretch your hands towards me. I'd like you to agree with me and pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit everywhere. As I lay my hands upon these requests.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stand upon your request prophetically the same way I'm standing upon it. Everything that is on you as a Lord, I bring it under your feet now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. It says, Behold, I give you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Believers, hear me. These Egyptians that you have dropped today, in the name of Jesus, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. Listen, Job said he will deliver you from six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Any pronouncement over anyone's destiny, whether it was warranted or unwarranted, my Bible says even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare by the blood, be free from every cost. Be free from every pronouncement. In the name of Jesus. In Genesis 32, the Bible says when Jacob was alone, a man came to him and he wrestled. And he said, leave me for the day break it. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel. For as a prince you have had power with God and prevailed. And he touched the whole of his tie and blessed him. And then my Bible says the sun arose and they called the name of that place Peniel, the face of God. Whatever has made night time in your life and has stopped light from rising, in the name of Jesus I declare, let your night be turned into day now. Hear me. Whatever has refused to walk in your life is a master we have toiled all night. Please believe these are not just mere words. They are words with a throne that backs them. Master we have toiled all night is a nevertheless at your word. What you did and failed, January, February, March, where you failed, we empower you. Go back and excel. Go back and excel. Help them, please, my God. Go back and excel. Hear me. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Whatever needs to die for you to see, I declare right now, may the earth open and swallow it. And David said, Is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Hallelujah. And they sent him to Lodabar. And he went and brought a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Ziba had 15 sons. And yet none of the sons was favored. And he brought Mephibosheth and said, You will eat with me here. And the sons of Ziba were the ones who would touch his land. I pray for you. Every destiny helper allocated by grace to you in this season. From the north to the south, the east and the west. By the power of prophecy, I call them into your life. Financial helpers, ministerial helpers, destiny helpers. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyone called buried in this place, whether for you or for your loved ones, you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, like Eli, I stand in priesthood with your pastor and will declare according to the time of life, return with your miracle testimonies. 
anyone trusting God for a job in this city or around this nation I don't care how long you have waited I stretch my hands to you and I declare by the spirit of grace three months like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom we speak to you the words of grace in the name of Jesus the allocation that is your portion let it come to you Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and Jesus grew and Jesus increased whatever has refused to grow in your life everything that is alive grows so your influence should grow your knowledge should grow your prayer life should grow your relationship should grow everything stagnating your growth in the name of Jesus Christ I cause it out of your life now Hallelujah. Every family here that has the testimony of Ichabod, that you were once in glory, you once tasted honor. Mariko Sazia has Kabaranda Shalakata. Grataska Bedekato Shalenda Brakatosa. Edga Kepa Katosha Tokoto. Parandas Kabarasha de Katelekatos. Breketeka Tabakata. Ratosa de Nekata. Maka Rishas. Pariso Zikata Variata. I declare by the Spirit of Grace. Every family brought down to shame and obscurity. I speak to you. Rise back to the place of honor. Rise back to the place of honor. Rise back to the place of honor. One more prayer. Stretch your hands towards me. This is a symbol of your productivity. I declare by the Spirit of God that the grace for fruitfulness, the grace for multiplication, the grace that replenishes, let it come upon your life now. Let it come upon those hands that are stretched towards me. Nothing dies in that hand. Can I pray for your spiritual life? I don't know what has happened to your fire. Zamakaso sekete balakata. Prayer fire. Word study fire. I pray for you right now. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Some of you, before you get home, you will find the things that you are your expectations here waiting for you. And I say it by the Spirit of grace, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Daniel chapter 3. Let's start reading from verse 23. Daniel chapter 3. It is true that God restores. God restores dry bones. The bones in Ezekiel's vision were once an army. But something happened and they began to deteriorate until they died. The longevity of their death caused the bones to so disintegrate. By the time the prophet would be speaking, the bones had scattered all around. But this is a mystery by the grace of God that God will show us that can help men to be unhurt in the midst of circumstances. This is not it. When you understand this mystery, it will not even get to a point where you will require restoration. There is a way that God's hand can come on time. There is a mystery you can engage that quarter to shame. His majesty will arise to ensure that your eyes does not see shame. Are we blessed? Daniel 3.23 We start our reading from verse 23. And these three men, this was the experience of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says they fell down into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Next verse, we are reading to 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished 
and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire he says they answered and said o king true o king he answered and said lo i see four men lose my goodness four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart someone receive that word for yourself and they have no heart god is a healer but he's also the one who can stop you from being hot and the form of the fourth is like the son of god 27 26 then nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said shadrach meshach abednego ye servants of the most high god come forth and come hither then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. Three more verses. And the princes, governors, captains, kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw this man, hallelujah, upon whose bodies, upon whose finances, upon whose destinies, the fire had no power. Turn that into prayer in one minute. Father, there is what you can do to my destiny that the fire can have no power. Is someone praying? Please keep that scripture there. That they all saw these men. So they are a kind of men whose bodies, the fire, had no power. Lift your voice and pray. Make me that kind of man in the name of Jesus. That the fire that is humbling the nations will have no power upon me men whose bodies the fire had no power men whose bodies the fire had no power hallelujah let's continue our reading let's read together nor was an hair of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire passed on them now what the bible says these men so it is not a possibility with every man there are a kind of men that whatever it is that they have done with god the effect is that the fire has no power over them that they do not even smell like what they went through and that the bible says that these men even their coats does not need to be changed I just trust that this is what we'll wrap up this conference with yes that having been wounded and battered the healing and restoring power of god comes to lift you but now that you are lifted he will show you a principle where you will never have to go back to that state again rather you will be the deliverer who will go and pick people at this how come you are not touched and he says i come to i came to water life and i was shown a mystery that there are times that the fire can burn you and god can come as a healer as rafa but now i've been shown a higher dimension of intelligence where the fire has no power now if you don't believe what i'm saying you will think certain people are lying can i tell you the truth in all honesty and in all fairness there are people who have mastered certain keys in this kingdom they live as if the devil does not exist there are others who live victorious but there are others who live as if battles don't exist this is a strange mystery remember the bible paul speaking said there are different kinds of bodies that some are celestial and some are terrestrial he said even among the stars one differed from another in glory there is the excellency of the workings of the spirit that can happen in the life of a believer it will compel all and sundry to say there is a dimension of God at work in your life. This is what God wants to do in our lives. That not only will people celebrate your victory or your restoration from a life of defeat, that something will happen to you that will say, are you a Nigerian? Is, is something really happening? Amen. Let's read that scripture again. We are reading down to 30. Please give it to us, media. 3 and verse 28 now. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake. Look at the effect of this mystery on them. 
He said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trust him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. As a result, therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this manner. So there are many ways God delivers, but this fashion is the type that touched the king even to make a decree. The last verse. The Bible says in verse 30, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon our understanding the systems of the kingdom. I began to observe at the beginning of our teaching in this conference that the Bible is a compendium of the multifaceted dimensions of God as revealed to the saints. And the character of God is that He captures His dimensions in names. So the Bible is full of names, names given to God as an attestation of His workings in specific dimensions. When they saw Him as a healer, they captured it in a mystery called Rapha. When they saw Him as provider they captured it in a mystery called Jaira yeah and when they saw him as the righteousness they captured him in a mystery called Sikenu out together now so all the names of God are a revelation of the dimensions of him and it is important that the saints know how to access these possibilities I did observe that there is nobody's destiny that is is an advantage by default no the very nature of man and the very sin nature has put us in a position of disadvantage but we take advantage of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit to begin to redefine our possibilities in this kingdom and there are people whose rate of transformation is so slow they do not reflect much of the glory of god but there are others who because of their passionate search and desperation contend for dimensions of superior transformation that their lives they literally become like gods upon the earth men who the fire had no power over their bodies hallelujah there are keys that make for divine intervention there are keys that make for this mysterious spiritual preservation in the life of the saints it was the psalmist himself reiterating on this possibility that said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he said i shall fear no evil why for thou art with me he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me that you can prepare a table for me in the midst so i don't need my enemies to necessarily go away for me to rise my driving them is not as a result of fear is that i do not want any other object to interrupt my worship of the king but whether they are there or not it should have no effect on my rising that a table can be prepared for me in the midst of my enemies hallelujah but jesus said i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven we reign in this kingdom by light please never forget this we reign in this kingdom by light it is the light that comes the illumination that comes from the word of god that empowers us to walk in victory darkness is a disadvantage to the believer lack of light will make the realities that are captured in this faith life to look like a lie you have to understand this so two people can go through the same situation and quite honestly one will not even know that he's in a situation like that while the other one all born again all lovers of jesus the difference is their comprehension of the ways of god hallelujah so we must cry for illumination i'm going to share with you three keys 
that provoke the hand of God to intervene in the lives of men to see that you never suffer shame in your Christian experience you will live mysteriously powerful when you walk with these principles hallelujah can we pray in one minute again and ask the Lord to open our eyes father I am willing to see and I'm ready to see please open my eyes in the name of Jesus Christ we're about to pray lift your voice open my eyes I need to see I need to see I need to see I need to see for the sake of my destiny I am tired of shame and reproach Lord open my eyes I have seen you as a restorer but become a preserver in my life let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy love let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy love. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The first biblical key that ensures a life of intervention and preservation in a believer is the power of consistent prayer. Not prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer that when a believer's prayer life becomes consistent effectual not just at the point of evil but it becomes a covenant that your prayer life and the fire upon your prayer life never goes down it's one of the mysteries that can stop men from experiencing shame. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible declares Jesus' teaching said, He spake a parable to the end that men, so if you are not a man, you are exempted from this, but provided you are a man wearing a body, He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. The key word there is always. Everybody say always. Always does not mean all day. It means consistently. According to the economy of God in his dealings with men, he does not assume that men need help just because they are in the presence of predicaments. You have to understand this. As powerful as God is, he has so limited himself to respect the will of man. There are seven fundamental things gave God gave man at creation. One of it is the will. The will of man is one of the factors. Not the born again man. Man as an entity. It makes him the zenith of God's creation. And from the time God gave man a will, it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto the will of man. Even at the expense of the eternal salvation of man, he still allows us to choose. At the expense of man's eternal self, eternal damnation, I meant to say. There are people today in hell, and yet the Father, with his all seeing eyes, he watched them live their life on earth and went to hell. The will of man is a very powerful concept. And because of that, listen to me. God bounded himself with a principle that until men call upon him as proof that they need his help, he may be touched, but he is not moved. Being touched means he is compassionate. Being moved means faith has beckoned on him. Are we together now? So many people wonder and pray and say, Lord, why don't you come? Is it that you cannot see? That's not the way it works in the kingdom. The Lord is nigh them that call upon Him. Not nigh them that desire Him to come. Nigh them that call upon Him. He said, call upon me and I will answer Psalm 133. 
I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Everybody say consistent prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The challenge with believers is that for some reason we have engineered ourselves into engaging prayer only at the instance of trouble that we can see. The moment trouble comes and it becomes imminent that we are in defeat, then we now begin to pray. We, we come up with all sorts of fasting programs and prayer programs, but the prayer ministry is the ministry of priesthood. It's part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer. Please understand this. It is not something that should happen only at the face of chaos. No. There are many believers who will tell you, I'm tired, I'm busy, but you hear that someone dropped dead or is in coma and suddenly you find out that they have all the time. That means they always had the time. You only have time for what you are passionate about. Hallelujah. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. In Acts chapter 12, when we read from verse 5 to 11, this was the story of um, Apostle Peter when he was caught in prison. Please give us from verse 5. The Bible says that now Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made how long? Please help me. Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season. Prayer was not just made without season because Peter was caught. It was the culture of the early church to always be in prayer. Prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night. Are you seeing it now? I told you that the, the, the re intervention means that the trouble is never allowed to manifest. The next day he was to be beheaded. And the Bible says that same night, while Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door of the prison, seven. It says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in prison. And he smote Peter on the right side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from his hand. Notice, every time he shows up like this, chains fall. The same thing happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. So he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee. And he followed me. Verse 9. And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true what was done by the angel, but thought he was in a vision. Verse 10. It says, And they were past the first and the second word, and they came to the iron gates that leaded unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Massive intervention on the strength of prayer. You do not know how cheap Satan is until you master the art of consistent prayer consistent prayer because you see in the realm of the spirit the bible lets us know that the prayer of the saints are held in vials according to revelations that when the there is like a prayer bank in the realm of the spirit that is able to go into the future of the saints prayer in vials lifted before the lord and stored for the times when they will be needed in the life of believers Many believers do not pray, I submit to you. They pray when they come to church and they are led by a man of God to pray. They have left the prayer ministry for men of God. And the moment you seem to be a bit serious with your prayer life, society makes you feel guilty. Say, are you a pastor? Where are you going with this thing? It's a very dangerous deception by hell, especially at the times that we live now. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint when jesus was god he never prayed but when jesus became a man 
he prayed also because all men pray to survive they don't just pray to be victorious are we together you can only fight the attacks you know and you have seen and you have perceived but there is more just like the man of god shared when he was on stage here let me tell you something if an average believer understands the schemings of hell part 24 hours over your destiny you will never never miss prayer again it is the one that manifests that you see that you know do you know i i read the book i read the book of job and the bible says job offered sacrifices for his children but we do not see job consistently as a man of prayer i saw sacrifice but i did not see prayer i guarantee you if job was a man of prayer the tragedy that happened would not be allowed to happen if the devil wants to attack you the system is first he brings through pride and carelessness and complacency and an arrival mentality he will allow your prayer life to go down he will allow it to go so down and then one day it will be like a dream he will strike you in a way and a manner that will surprise you hallelujah consistent prayer in Acts chapter 16 just write it we may not read it when you read from verse 25 to 34 the bible talks about paul and silas who were bound in jail and every time they caught the believers and put them to jail the goal was to eventually kill them not just to store them there and the bible says at midnight that paul and silas prayed and then they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them and then when you read the other verses they would tell you that suddenly there was a sound that god came the prison the bands broke and the jailer was about to kill himself and he said no don't do this we're on hot because they prayed and they praised you must obtain grace from god families must come up with an intentional prayer program let me tell you this if you are not systemic about your prayer life you will never be consistent prayer has nothing to do with emotions you must come up with a systemic approach to prayer maybe for someone this may be a solution you've been praying and say lord why am i up today and down tomorrow you must come up with a systemic prayer i personally recommend taking advantage of mornings and nights because for most people we are workers and the the time we can steal out to really focus and concentrate is the mornings and the nights it doesn't mean you cannot pray uh, any part of the day but i'm telling you the mornings and the night there are few times where we see jesus praying even in the afternoon his times were before the day broke you invest time in prayer are we together james chapter 5 and verse 13 apostle james said is anyone afflicted james chapter 5 and verse 13 is anyone among you afflicted the biblical recommendation is let him pray not let him go around discussing with people not let him go around attracting sympathy let him pray by the grace of god i tell you with all humility I am a product of prayer i know what prayer does to the gates of darkness when the saints are serious about it show me what is refusing to walk show me the door that is refusing to open i like you to stay and pray and you watch the wonder walking power of prayer it was bishop Oedebo that said no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire by mistake he can hold your trouser and people say yeah he's mad just forgive him but you will never enter fire and say i am mad do you know the bible says when a spirit leaves a man that that spirit goes through desert places nobody is there to cast that spirit out of the desert and yet the spirit leaves the desert and and prefers the body of that man than the desert and i i, I studied it and i said why do they hate deserts i found out is the heat desert is a hot place 
and the fire that burns there will make the demons prefer a cold human body than a desert without anybody to cast him so when your life becomes like that desert the spirits by themselves will be compelled to relocate there is there is an extent of fire a requisite level of fire that when a believer carries i tell you they project an arrow without your knowing that arrow will re is a spiritual circumference when it enters that zone it, it, re it doesn't just return back to sender it returns with a message written on it You will not have the luxury to react to every satanic assault. So you fortify yourself. A system of auto-reaction by an investment in prayer to the point that even when you are sleeping, your spirit is praying. If you are not a person of prayer, you will not understand what I'm saying. There is a way you can pray. You sleep and you just want to stretch. That stretch of two minutes will become a disaster to hell. Shakas koparatoski batalia. Mabratu zesikatali aparatu ziata. Oh, people pray, pray, pray. I beckon on you in the name of Jesus that every spirit that is eating your prayer life is eating your destiny. It takes more than intellect to arrive. It takes more than intellect to be exempted. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences. There are destructions that wait in noonday. We move swimming in an ocean of evil. It takes prayer to keep exempting yourself. Every time you pray, you leave a prophecy in the spirit. I am exempted. My children are exempted. All that concerns me are exempted. There are spirits that are sent on an errand that even them, they know that errand will not happen. Because they wonder why they were sent to certain people. That you can carry a dimension of prayer fire. It, it's not for preaching. You know, I'm not talking of prayer to prepare sermons. He maketh his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire. Parakatos kadibalakata. You get up, you are walking around Many years of the investments of prayer in, in a shrine they are conjuring things And they bring your picture They say for this man and for his family And while they are praying suddenly Like a mighty rushing wind They hear a sound from the spirit You are registering your presence In the realm of the spirit Exempted from evil Exempted from catastrophe let me tell you this there are many times sometimes i'm about to travel i live quite a busy schedule and when i want to travel people i know who are genuine men and women and prophets of god they can send me a text and say apostle are you about to travel i say yes he say please don't travel i just saw a revelation i saw a ghastly motor accident and i saw you in it i say you are right except that you hold on receive a report from the spirit that was sent Dominion is the ability to veto the workings of darkness. If I, if, I, if I fear death, I will not bless the body of Christ again. Because the devil does not have a special day to want to kill me. Every day is a day that is a project. When you see men survive, it's, it's, it's not because the devil is not aware of their existence. They have mastered the art of paralyzing him. He told Job, he said, have you not built a hedge around him? Parus Kadaba. As you are listening to this, there is an impartation of the grace of prayer. For some of you, God is telling you, this is why evil is prevailing in your family. There is no one there to stand and administer priesthood. I'm not just talking of five minutes devotional. Thank God for that. I'm not talking of just family prayer that ends up in quarrel. I'm talking of a dedicated time of prayer. Not praying and you are browsing. No. 
Maruzia Takata. I vow that you will not be promoted in this office. Don't argue with the man. Leave him and his folly. Go back to your secret place. Shekoska Prakata. Embreketoske Barikata. Listen, the ministry of angels are real, but many of us have never experienced it. Read your Bible. Angels walk with prayer. Anywhere you see the angelic, the prayer ministry activated them. You are not a person of prayer, you will know nothing about angels. I hope you are getting blessed. Please do not sit down and fold your arms and allow evil to come and crush you. The arsenals of hell are rising like never before. All of a sudden it looks like you are having dreams you don't understand. You are having visions you don't understand. The issue is not just to wait until the day you have an opportunity for counseling. Babatuski Abala. Zeketuska Branduka Zubariata. And as you begin to pray, you are investing time in prayer. Show me a weak believer who looks like he's a victim of the vicissitudes of life. Introduce him to the priesthood of prayer. I show you a sign and a wonder. Whilst you're seated in one minute, can you just blast in tongues for one minute? As a sign and a token to your destiny that I am still coming. Men who fire had no power over them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Zikesh Kalari Sahasanda Bragadasia Katabratis Shiparaketo Siata. You mentioned the name of your children. Mata Prakato Saziketa Bareketo Satia Kata. You mentioned your office. Embrakataska Barato Siakatashke Lebariata. You mention your business. You mention your family. Mandes Koparuzia Takapranda Kapariatasia. Forcefully advancing by the spirit of grace. Forcefully advancing. No arsenal of hell. No arrow of darkness. No prophecy. No divination. No enchantment. No witchcraft. No ordinance in the heavenlies will prevail over me. Will prevail over my destiny. Hallelujah. Let me share with you a story. Many years ago, one time I was praying in the night. And when I was praying in the night, I used to pray behind a wall. And while I was praying, that was my first encounter with a physical demon, not a vision, a demon like you are seeing somebody. And all of a sudden, I see this being stand. And he said, get back. And I'm watching my God. What is this? Will men believe if I tell them this? Then I just prayed in tongues and that's how it left. You see, I don't share these things because there are... We live in a generation of people who... Not all men have faith. When people hear these things, they think you're just talking rubbish. In one of the encounters, I was praying. Praying in the spirit. All of a sudden, my roof just disappeared and then I see this being like a sea creature it had a tail looking like a dinosaur but the tail also had its own life that means the tail can disconnect and still be alive the eyes were as big as that of a human being and it was looking at me and it spoke and I had it it said so you think you want to bring God's people into abundance that spirit is what the Bible calls mammon I saw it I know the spirit that keeps people poor. I know the spirit that destroys people. See, there are dimensions in the spirit you cannot access if you don't pray. I, I didn't start having encounters with angels just because I was born again and a child of God. 
there are frequencies in the spirit you rise to one day you will hit an escape velocity and you are in a dimension of dominion and power that the earth will respond to are we together do you believe what i'm telling you they are about to drive people from your place of work instead of going around to talk to someone and he says bring one million bring two million i will consider you no men ought always to pray see let me tell you this if you believe in god and you believe in the power of prayer engage it and watch what happens to you some of you are crying i'm looking at you because the holy spirit is telling you had you prayed this thing that happened is not because god is not mighty it's because heaven kept asking who in this family can pray evil is about to come but heaven is ready heaven is ready who is there to pray they come in dreams they come through prophecies people send text messages but slumber keeps you the bible says a little it says, awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light you must obtain grace to kill the spirit of slumber in your life. The hand of God is coming upon this word, this these people. I'm seeing it in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing a spirit. I cast that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are not in ministry when you hold a mic. You are in ministry when you are serious with God and serious with prayer. I have told myself, by the grace of God and with all humility, that there is no mortal man who will meet me and remain the same. It's a covenant with God. It's a covenant that I have with God. That if I pray for you and nothing changes, I will go for a retreat. I'm wasting my time. It means I'm not doing ministry. Listen, I'm not saying this to brag. I want, I want you to be angry this morning. Challenge yourself. That when you come, spirits know you are coming. Spirits know you are coming. When you stand there, there is an effulgence of grace from you. You can fake power, but you can't fake a relationship. You can't fake a track record of a life of prayer and consistency. That before evil arises, prayer has gone forth. Before evil arises, an arsenal in the spirit, there is a bulwark of power protecting, defending. There are forces that want to make every destiny to not rise there are horns that if left will frustrate the counsel of god it will take the ministry of prayer say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames spirit of laziness spirit of slumber I come against you. It was while men slept that the enemy came and planted something. Please sit down. This is a Thanksgiving service. A few minutes and we're done. The next key that provokes divine intervention according to scripture that the saints can access to win battles even before they start is the power of praise praise is not just about singing and dancing alone it's a mysterious instrument for warfare and faith psalm 22 and verse 3 paru kabaranda but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. 
that God makes the praise of men his habitation. Psalm 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. It says so. By using this mystery of prayer and praise, there are weapons. Shall I be saved? Keep that scripture, please. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. It said, In doing so, shall I be saved from my enemies. That when they encompass me and they say, Where is his God? I will engage the mystery of prayer. And after prayer, I will praise the God who is worthy. To be praised it says that when i do this that so shall i be saved from my enemies judges chapter 1 and verse 2 judges chapter 1 and verse 2 let's hurry up they were about to go for battle and they inquired of the lord what tribe should go first and lead in battle so that we can win and the lord said judah judah means praise it says judah shall go up behold in praise i have delivered the land to his hands there is there is something mysterious about praise that is called perfected praise praise that comes from the, the depth of a man's heart like your pastor shared for the things that he has done for the things that he is doing and that which he will do praise is powerful it was Kenneth Copeland that asked Bishop David Oyedepo he said you claim we are the ones who taught you faith but how come God has given you increase like this and Bishop Oedipo laughed. He said, I danced every one of these people to church. I danced every one of them. In praise alone. Let me tell you this. This thing you call a dance is a mysterious spiritual weapon. Listen. Please listen. Praising God with a dance is a mystery that only traditional people understand. That they invoke there is a reason why every tradition has preserved dancing through decades it is not just about shaking your body there is a deep mystery in a dance hallelujah yes that when the ark of the lord was taken back to jerusalem david escorted it in a dance and with praise and Saul's daughter saw him and said, You are too dignified. You are insulting the pedigree of your office. And he said, I am dancing before the Lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave it to me. And God had it and she died barren. Please listen to me. If you master the art of praise, thank God for the one you do corporately in church. But go back, lock yourself write all your prayer requests write all the mockery write all the shame are you together now and dance it before the god of heaven if you can't sing get Igbo high praise oh yes oh yes and you play it and dance before the lord like a madman it's none of your business whether you can dance or not it's not a competition this is warfare are we together that you rejoice and celebrate his majesty you will watch battles that you don't need to fight it's when the victory is won god will say you were supposed to fight this the mystery of intervention i have seen this mystery change impossible situations in the lives of people i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise People who had no business having jobs. People who did not apply. And when the names came out, their names were there with no application. Psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7. Psalm 67. 
Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Verse 6. It says, Then shall the earth, that means the earth has been instructed to, in, to yield its increase only at the instance of praise. Now, the earth is a universal point of contact. Everything makes contact with the earth. Your destiny helper makes contact with the earth. The person who will give you breakthrough makes contact with the earth. The person who will lift you makes contact with the earth. So when the Bible says the earth should yield her increase, this earth you see is a universal point of contact. Everything that lives touches the earth. The Bible says as for the earth, out of it comes bread. You can dance your way with honor. And while you are doing so, God will wake someone and say, remember I told you to keep two million naira that you will bless some people. Now, this just bless this brother with it and let him pay his rent and the person does not know you you just get a text send me your account you think they are scammers until you see their lot and god says i'm not endorsing laziness but i am showing you that i am the god of all flesh and that in praise the bible says glorious in holiness fearful in praises there are dimensions of god you will only see in praises Hallelujah. So while you were dancing and you were celebrating, it was not just a church celebration. I tell you sincerely, you are provoking something in the realm of the spirit. Fearful in praises. Go back home today. Don't just stop here. Go back home. Find a room. Find somewhere. Just place some worship and praise and dance before God. And someone says, ah, did you get an alert? He said, no, 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 no. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. And while you are dancing, you are celebrating. Five minutes will turn to ten minutes. Ten minutes to fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes to twenty minutes. Twenty minutes to thirty minutes. All of a sudden, you start getting text messages. Someone you have been trying to pursue by yourself for five years. Suddenly says, where are you? I don't know why you are coming to my mind. Now you know. The Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know. Are we together? fearful in praises number three the third key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is the power of sacrifice write it down the power of sacrifice psalm 126 verse 1 to 6 sacrifice is a mystery in the kingdom that God never ignores that people can change the tides of things against them there have been times in the Bible when it was obvious to certain kings that they were going to defeat them and take their nations the Bible says they carried their own children and slew them and when they slew their children and indignation rose before God and the battles were overturned. My Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. 3. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in... They that sow in... There are certain seeds you don't laugh when you are sowing it. When you are giving Ishmael, you laugh. But when it is truly Isaac, you will know that this one... Please keep that scripture there. They that sow in tears shall reap not with joy, in joy. And then the Bible says, verse 6, that, please give us verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Why? Because he is bearing precious seeds. He says, without a doubt he will come again rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Believers, let me tell you this. Sadly, every time preachers teach about sacrifice, most times 
we think that it's just about money and giving money and emptying accounts and so on and so forth the real idea of sacrifice is using the principle of resurrection to change the circumstances in your life let me share with you a mystery god taught me and that would be the end for this session according to scripture the bible says this heaven and this earth shall pass away is that true that a new heaven and a new earth can come again now paul teaching on the seed taught a mystery and he said that this seed in the kingdom you don't only reap what you sow but there is something you can do to your seed that at resurrection it will carry another body that god is able to give your seed another body is that correct and according to scripture the bible says when a seed is sown it dies do we agree it dies and then it comes back to life that means any season i do not want to see in my life i can tie that season to a seed and if i plant that seed provided that seed dies that season must also die with it i show you how to end seasons in your life that i see a season and i'm tired of that season i can bring that season to end by using the principle of death and resurrection i tie that season of delay i tie that season of pain i tie that season of disappointment to a seed the moment that seed dies i start rejoicing it's impossible for that season to still be alive when your seed has died and then when resurrection starts it comes with another season another season in your life or a robots before he died one time he was diagnosed of an incurable disease and the doctor told him oral please prepare you may not be able to survive this you may not leave and he said why he said we're sorry we've done our best and he called his wife he said how much do we have in this account that account called his staff and he said go and empty it as a sacrifice the moment that sacrifice went mysteriously his system began to change you see i've taught this you see why it's dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know what season who is trying to kill if you stop that season from dying you will continue that season in your own life are you getting this now yes because seeds should die and if you come and carry tenera, someone has tied his delay tied his barrenness tied his witchcraft on that seed and you carry it and put it in your pocket it's not money you put in your pocket you authorize those seasons and say i have the power to handle you come to me because it's only the one who changes seasons that should deal with those seeds show me any season that you do not like in your life i can show you how to change it that if god can grant you grace with understanding and you take a sacrifice i have turned seasons in my life overnight by the power of seeds hallelujah i remember many years ago i was in port Harcourt. i was tired of a season in my life and the lord gave me an instruction it was during a conference and he said to carry everything i had when i say everything i mean everything they didn't have much i put everything in a bag and dragged it like a coffee to the church unfortunately i went late and i sat at the overflow and when people were dancing to come and give their seats people were giving land people were giving a lot of things the holy ghost decided to disgrace me he said you wait till everybody is done then you will come and i had to obey true story as soon as everyone was done giving he said now you can go i held my bag this was my it was a real isaac i dragged everything to the altar in the presence of everyone when i dropped everything something inside me fell with it i knew that this was isaac i went back to my seat and i sat down 
and the Holy Ghost spoke a few words to me I will never forget what happened to me the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me and says are you Joshua Selman said yes he said send me your account number I said who are you he said that's not the issue just send me your account number and he sent something to me that except you are not godly you must praise God when you say that kind of thing and from that time God began to do things in my life seasons can change by the power of sacrifice are we together sacrifice sacrifice is not just giving checking your pocket and carrying money and dropping no sacrifice is an intentional it is not the money it is the understanding and the sacrifice that backs that money you can drop money and it was just donation sacrifice in first Kings 17 when you read from verse 6 I believe the story of Elijah and the widow in Zarephath the Bible says that Elijah came after the ravens brought bread and all of that when you go to verse 7 that he came to a woman in Zarephath and he told her she was trying to pack her wood and he said madam bring me a cup of water respectfully she was bringing it to honor the man of God he said while you are coming please make me some bread I'm hungry and she said sir sincerely I'm about to eat the last one so that I and my son will die and he said surely that will not happen he said you just bring it and let me eat and when he brought it he prophesied to her she lived off that until the famine was over Psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can ask your pastor you can ask every man of God that I know there is nobody I know who is thriving in a position of honor and grace that sacrifice did not take them there once upon a time Archbishop Benson Idahosa was entering a plane and there was an issue in the plane and there was need for a seat and you know nobody was willing to excuse and do all of this and a particular businessman got up to honor him and he said because you have honored me he prophesied to him the name of that businessman is Aliko Dangote there are stories behind the glories of men and today can be an opportunity for you to seal this praise service with an understanding of sacrifice that you can change seasons and you can introduce newer seasons into your life with power with understanding I once had a story as I round up of a couple this is a true story this couple came to church and I think the church at that time was having a project and they wanted to zinc the church and they were also having their own they had their own house and then they were trying to build another I think or so for rentals and they decided as a couple they said we are going to do something that is really crazy they said we are going to carry this money and we are going to take it to the church and we will sow it there and they took that seed crying and when they dropped that seed they returned back home and according to the man he said the Lord told them that you will never have to build a house by yourself in your life again because of this that you have done the time that man was talking without exaggeration he had 21 properties none built by himself these are the kinds of teachings where it becomes difficult to not teach without a testimony but then it also becomes difficult to share your own testimony because at that point when, when you do it now it will, be, it will become like it is pride and then because we seek to project Jesus and him alone I can share with you testimonies your pastors can share with you testimonies of what sacrifice can do so don't think this is some jamboree to just manipulate anybody who sincerely loves you and wants you to be exempted from evil from poverty from pain will tell you this 
today by the grace of God and with all humility I've had the opportunity to meet people who I do not know who come together as a business and say we came and agreed that we'll make you a non-executive board member in our company who are you what do you do they say no you your own is just to bring the presence of God in our business don't don't please don't think men of God are daft well you know people have a way of believing that all we do is just preach we don't know anything at all about finance about life it's not so it's not so hallelujah that it is possible to step into prepared blessings there are times god will give you seeds to sow but there are times the urgency will require bread coming directly from heaven he can do both he can give you seed to sow and he can send manna from heaven for you some of us the urgency in our lives right now does not require seeds to sow you need bread coming from heaven to cater for your needs hallelujah the power of consistent prayer the power of a grateful heart expressed in praise praise with a dance praise with a dance with understanding and then the power of sacrifice that you lay something down that shakes the gate of hell and you say lord by this seed i am prepared to change seasons by this seed i am prepared to move to higher dimensions of the anointing Years ago, I took a seat to go and honor a man of God. And when I went to honor that man of God, he looked at me and he said, kneel down. And he says, Father, put him in a position where only him can solve that problem. I thought it was a selfish prayer. I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm all for the body of Christ. I like everybody rising together. And I could sense him feeling that is your business. I'm praying a prayer for you. Now I understand what he was saying. That wherefore... God had, uh, what, what was, was the, highly exalted him and given him a name that is above. It's not a name that is below. A name that is above. Your name can be below, but there is a name that is above. That when the name is mentioned, there is a reaction in this kingdom. Hallelujah. My life is a testament of sacrifices. I tell you sincerely under God. I believe it is so with your pastor. The only person left is you. Life will remain at a natural phase for you till you accelerate your rising through the power of intentional sacrifice. You may not have money to give. One day wake up in the morning and plead with your pastor and say, Sir, I don't have money to give but I am here today to iron your clothes. I will iron your clothes and wash your car with understanding. That is sacrifice. As you are washing that car, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm tired of trekking. I'm tired of walking around like a fool. I'm tired of stagnation. When they kick a car, it moves obediently. My destiny should also move. And while you are washing that car, and you are washing those clothes, and the Lord says, so this is what you are doing to honor me. Since you cannot see me, you are honoring my servant. Step into the next level. This I'm telling you is a very powerful mystery. Very powerful mystery. Recently, a, a great man of God, a, a great friend of mine, he went to go and sow a seed into the life of God's servant, um, Baba Deboe. And when he went there, he told him, he said, lie flat on the ground on my carpet. And when he lay flat on the ground, he began to speak to him from the bowels of his spirit. When I saw it, I said, this man, see, there is a way that people speak. You know they are just blessing you so you will go. But there is a way they are standing in their office with the throne that backs them activated and they utter words from their spirit. It will rattle systems and structures till it shifts your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? I never start my year. There are specific sacrifices to specific people let me tell you the truth you see we say these things because we want you to understand that it's not just you know we have a way of thinking people are just lucky god is just helping them it's not true 
Many of you by the grace of God Have had a choice servant of God Seated in your midst Week after week Month after month But you have not had the discernment To say who is this man And what great When I saw your property The extension there I was talking to your pastor I said I thought this was the end of it When I saw it I said my God This has to be grace here And yet for, for a long time You are looking for a property that you can have the discernment to carry a sacrifice and come and kneel before pastor and his wife to say sir i discern that you are a career of grace that brings dominion at a territorial level i pray in the name of jesus that you will activate something in my life it does not matter whether it's done in secret or it's done in the open <sighs> doors just open like that Are we together? Yes. This is the mystery by which men, ordinary men, rise to supernatural dimensions of grace with the mighty hand and the power of God. Sacrifice is powerful. I live in it. It's not something that maybe you do once in a while. Please hear me. If you want to change seasons and you want to take shame out of your life, let sacrifice be like a shadow to you. Those who are not of this kingdom will call it foolishness. They will even call it manipulation of members. And as I've always observed, I know that there are places and there are people where there are all kinds of things. By the grace of God, your church and this place and this conference is a place of truth and integrity. And I tell you sincerely, you can turn seasons around. I had the privilege of talking with one of the group general managers of a bank in this nation. And I prophesied to him that I saw trouble coming to your bank, mister. And here is my advice for you. Get a sacrifice and take it to a man of God as God will reveal to you. And watch what happens. And with childlike foolishness, he carried that sacrifice. And the last time we spoke, it was a wonder what God had done in his bank. This is not something that is just spiritual. It has monetary implication. It has destiny implication. Hallelujah. Yes. The power of sacrifice. Mama, I don't know what grace was on you. You didn't go to school, but you raised 11 children by frying akara. It's not about akara. There was a grace. I carried this sacrifice with my big manism and my masters and doctors. Let something come upon my life Whatever made you to feed 11 children And none of us You were giving people rice Who went to school Where you see supernatural results And consistent results It's no more scientific Listen It is what is on you That controls what is around you Everything around you is a report card. It's an attestation. It's showing us what is on you. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I came from a region that did not have so many successful people. I saw people become mediocre. I hardly saw ministries rise from that point to a global scale. And I said, no, this I have to exempt. My. See, there is, there is a holy anger. There is an anger that comes upon you. That you say in the name of Jesus, seed, go for me. I, I send you like a weapon. Enter my tomorrow. Scatter what is not of God. Scatter altars. And ensure that I do not see shame. Hallelujah. It's true. It's true. I went for a conference, a PFN conference in Adamawa some years ago. And the man who drove me was a doctor. He's a lecturer in the university there. But he had been barren for a long time. And he said, please allow me drive apostle. This was a distinguished person in the academia. And while he, he never spoke to me about it. And on the final day... I now looked at him and said, why am I hearing the cry of a baby? And he said, thank God. I said, I'm hearing the cry of a baby because the Lord is telling me that you have been barren. Your wife has been barren. He started crying. Today as I speak to you, I don't even know how many children he has. 
exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice husband no job wife no job children no job no way you carry a seed and you take it before the lord and say if god be god let fire fall from heaven and take away this shame let me tell you many people are not yet tired of shame that's why sacrifice looks too heavy when you see the implication of shame in your life and your destiny and reproach we are going to pray this is a thanksgiving service but god wants to perfect this in our lives and it will happen through the power of sacrifice i tell you sincerely there are many of you here as i'm talking to you the spirit of god is speaking to you i'm saying this is the step that you need to push i'm not talking of giving for god's sake like you just carry money and come and drop emotionally no this is a calculated intentional it is it is coming from the bowels of pain i'm tired of a season in my life oh god i am tired of always begging and looking for things i am tired of always being stranded somewhere on the way and you provoke seasons and you watch the hand of the mighty one move and shift things in your life i'm going to pray for you tonight but as we round up this conference i have not made this discussion with your pastor and respectfully speaking i don't know what god is going to tell you now i know that this is not something that I'm speaking by the Spirit and I apologize. I hope I do not break any protocol. Listen to me. I want you by the Spirit of God to stand with God in prayer and say, Lord, speak to me. What seed as a sacrifice will I bring not to the church, not to the church, to this vessel of yours and his wife? There is a grace there, the spiritual coverings over this place. I sense in my spirit that God wants to shift people into seasons. I know you can come and drop offering for church. I'm talking of the grace, tapping into the grace of God upon this man. That there are sacrifices that God is going to speak to you in this season. He will speak to you as a family. He will speak to you as a company. See, except God is not God, that you heed to this that I'm saying, you will testify in tears on this stage at the way God will shift you through seasons. It is true. Hallelujah. This is what I do. This is what I live by. It's not theory. It's true. That you can wave certain seasons goodbye and they will wave you back authorized to leave you certain dimensions of shame leave your life forever till jesus comes please rise up on your feet we have just two three minutes in one minute i'd like you to talk to the lord father i have given you thanks for all that you have done in my life but i'm ready to shift seasons don't just pray for things pray for seasons i sense in my spirit that we are in an encounter this morning to shift seasons not just to bring more things not just to bring new things but to shift entire seasons in our lives from seasons of spiritual bankruptcy to seasons of spiritual buoyancy seasons of lack and wants to seasons of blessings and abundance seasons of mediocrity and obscurity to seasons of notoriety and honor are you praying please lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray exempt me from evil oh god exempt me from disaster i'm tired of shame tired of reproach tired of shame tired of reproach 
tired of the mockery of men let no man ask where is my god again put a testimony he said he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise in my heart many will see it and fear and put their trust in him someone who is angry with this current level like a woman about to give birth are you praying father in the name of jesus as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son i'm tired of this season in the name of jesus i have given you thanks and praise for this level for all that you have done from january february march april may june july august september october november now is the time to change to shift to a new dimension hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now please listen i want to pray for you finally and then i'm off the stage i don't know what it is that god is going to speak to you on i will pray for the grace for prayer and i've taught you the mystery of praise your pastor is a master at understanding that and he so demonstrated it with his life off stage but the part that concerns me right now is the area of sacrifice and you don't have to do it you don't have to be coerced but that there are people here by the spirit of the living god that the lord am, am i am i am i am i fine sir there are people here that the lord is speaking to you that you are in a strange season of a sacrifice or a season that demands a sacrifice this is not for everybody you will not go to hell if you don't come out but i know that there are people god is speaking to i'm not going to mention any amount but this is a sacrifice you want to change seasons in your life i want you to leave your seat please don't come out and stand here and then not obey god there is no point doing that you sit back don't feel bad at all i'm going to pray for everybody i'm just flowing as the spirit of god has told me please i'd like you to come and stand here quickly in prayer mean what you are saying mean what you are saying mean what you are saying don't this is not an emotional thing please let it be from the depth of your heart please give me a bit of volume it's time for seasons to change please don't just stand looking at me pray in one minute father i'm standing here because seasons must change and i must testify seasons must change financial seasons spiritual seasons by the power of the holy ghost god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent hallelujah keep coming please make space for them please make space for them can we make space for them just if you need to shift a little you will watch the wonder walking power of jehovah over your life We end seasons through sacrifice and we birth new seasons through sacrifice. Those of you here, you can shift forward a bit so that you make room for more people. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you will do what you do. This is a move. We need a move. This is a moon. She la baradu zas ye kataba la daba. Please look at me. I'm going to politely invite your pastor and your prophet to join me. There's such such hunger to speak over the life of the people. Please hear me. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I assure you by the God of heaven that if it is this God we serve and it is not... If, if I stand here to deceive you 
and that I'm teaching you cunningly devised fables may a cause rest upon me and my generation and my children's children. But if this is the integrity of God's word, then I assure you, if God be God, know that this, the last season you came to this church with is the last season you are seeing in your life forever. Some of you, what you are doing now is your children that will eat from it. And your children's children, they will ask you one day and say, how did we come into this? Because I look at the past and it does not look like what should be. And you tell them, I, I initiated a process of transgenerational relevance through the power of sacrifice. The day I did mine, I cried. Let me tell you, I was not laughing. No, I cried. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you are crying because you are tired of seasons. One day ago, better is nonsense. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. When you think about your children, you think about your life, your ministry, your destiny, then an indignation rises in your heart and you say, let God be true and all men liars. Let me speak over your life. For some of you, it is in this prayer that altars will finally be buried forever by the sea. It took sacrifice to build those altars. It is sacrifice that will destroy them. Some of you, the voices speaking against your destiny that will never allow you rise. It takes more than just casting out demons. Father, in the name of Jesus, here at Word Alive, we stand and I stand again in partnership with the grace of the man of God for every one of you who is standing here I command fire from heaven and I pray oh God my God who is also your God the fire and the grace and the unction that shifts people to new seasons may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ Every power tying your finances, your spiritual life, repeating all seasons in your life. You change jobs, but the same seasons keep repeating. You change location, but the same seasons keep repeating. I bring those seasons to an end now in the name of Jesus. The same thing happened when you were in Lagos. The same thing happened when you were in Port Harcourt. The same thing happened when you were in London. The same thing happened when you were in US. Now that you are in Abuja, the same thing wants to happen. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. And in the name of Jesus, I bring tragedy to an end in your life. I bring shame and reproach to an end in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for your finances. Please help those under the anointing. Listen to me. There are three levels of wealth revealed from scripture. Number one, there is a level of wealth that has to do with exchanging your value and your time for rewards. Are we together now? Value that, is, that comes from transacting business. Number two, there is the second level of wealth that is as a product of transformation. You don't sell that value. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.